Howdy, folks, and welcome to episode four of Not J Builds. We're actually going to be painting tonight. Uh, if you saw the <clears throat> the uh, doohickey on the on the, on the uh, screen and the whatnot in the Hey Ninety Ninety, um, you hey, know, boss. howdy, howdy. You know that we are going to be painting. Well, I and McMurray are going to be. Uh, painting some Star Wars figures, and we're gonna be doing. We're gonna do, we're gonna test something out. We're gonna see if we can use contrast paints on black primed figures by doing a heavy light colored dry brush on them. Uh, looks like a Hissy Cat is gonna be building a Tamiya. Japanese cruiser, is that right? As he walks away. So, uh, McMurray will be here shortly. We got uh, Charles in early. He was here about 7.35, saying an evening. We got uh, Chris Long, A. Hello, how's it going, A? And then Chris, hi, everyone. Great to see you all. So... Thanks again for uh, coming and joining us, guys. Um, I do really appreciate it. Um, I'm I'm so I'm liking these Saturday nights. Uh, I really got nothing better to do most of the time, so you know, might as well do it, right? So um, I just just pulled off these uh, bases that I three D printed. Uh, you know, these are three D printed. Uh, these are Skull Forge miniatures, um, 3D models that uh, I've I 3D printed and have already primed. And now I'm just plopping them on, uh, plopping them on the bases here. Give them something to, to stand on while I'm painting them. And yeah, I hope everybody had a good end of the week. Um, had a lot of fun on uh, Wednesday with our second anniversary. That was uh, that was good times. Uh, Tim D's in the house. Hi, folks. Still got to post those Yamato pics when I get the dust off. Haven't forgotten. Oh, no worries, man. No worries. It's all good. So tonight, and there's Mr. McMurray. McMurray, hey guys, what's going on? How are you doing tonight? Oh, you know, living the dream, man. There you go. Ah, there crap. Go. I'll be popping in and out. I'm still cooking dinner. That's fine. Chili without beans? No, actually, just potatoes. Oh, all right. Did you get your uh, pancakes? I did. I did. Outstanding. No complaints. Yeah, so I'm going to be building this Yabari, the easy version. Apparently, uh, Cabs wants to get her face involved. Well, of course she does. All right. So as I said, I want to thank everybody that, uh, that showed up on uh wednesday night it was uh good times had a lot of fun i hope uh y'all had fun as well sorry guys reorganizing the paint stand for just a second here so that i can figure out where everything is and needs to go before we get rolling on something new So, Chris, you got Star Wars guys to uh, to run with? Yeah, yeah. So, I was about to say, what's, to... The, what's the title of the episode that we're trying to come back to every time? So, tonight, well, it's uh, Not Jay Builds is the, is the title of the series. 
And this one is contrast paint, contrast on black primer. I got gotcha. you. All right. Um, Tim D says, Hey, Nanguea. Uh, Chris says, Hey, Tim, at Tim D. I still have a C64 on the brain. Uh, they always do. Cool. Um, Charles put some paint on a few minis, started uh, setting up counters for uh, Tonga 1914 or Tanga 1914. Team nice. wrote a few pages, cleared half a shelf for all my new World War One games. Nice. Well, that's good. So you know who's going to be talking World War One, And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, we've got, there is a anniversary show um Uh, oh, I'm, damn it, I'm drawing a blank. Who's talking about you guys? Or? One of you, one of the guys out there on his channel, the weekend of, um, the weekend of, uh, um, March to Victory, he is He's got a. He's going to do a live show um, as a celebration for, I think, his one year anniversary, and um, he's going to be talking World War One. Is it a gaming channel or a blog? Yeah, or? It's, it's, it's one of our viewers. Okay. Yeah, it, it's yeah, Chris. Sorry. Yeah, Ning, uh, Ninguea. Okay. So yeah, you're gonna talk when World War One and whatever. It's gonna be March 25th, uh, that Saturday of March to Victory. Outstanding. What so, what about World War One? Anything in particular, <laughs> Nanguaya? That'd be cool to hear about, especially if you're gonna talk Tenga 1914. If we're talking German East Africa, sign me up, buddy. You're all about it, right? I mean, um, basically any part of World War One, but especially that's a uh, particular favorite. Chris Long says, I found light deck tan work for a dry brush for painting over black. All right. So I got these guys right here. Um, they are, like I said, uh, from Skullforge. Dude makes some amazing, uh, amazing sculpts. They're 3D printed. And that white really flushes them out. Let me see if I can get a better, a better color behind him. There we go. Well, if once you dry brush them in white, that should ultra pick out the details. So we can, yeah, I would say hammer on that, and then we'll take a look at them again. So I am I'm also painting three gonna... D models or three D printed models. Now, these guys are specifically the gang that uh, was put together um, by this guy here. And uh, to go rescue this guy here. And they brought uh, the Mandalorian along with them. That was awfully nice of them. Out. Yeah. So, um, let's see here. I don't want to use a white gray. I want to use, what do I want to use? I'm going to use skeleton bone on one of them. You sure are planning a bunch. I just went full Leroy Jenkins with Matt White. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm testing some stuff out. Same. I've never done this before. I want to I wanna see what I can see, if you will. 
So where's a good dry brush? I think. I think this might work. Um. Well, apparently, Cabby decided to sit in while I was <laughs> checking on dinner. <laughs> there you go. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Some of this stuff's really small. So, well, I'll leave it there for a little bit. All right. Now, I am not the best dry brusher. The good thing is, right now, ah, and he's breaking off the base already. Son of a bitch. I feel like for this sort of thing, you're usually looking for like a heavy overbrush, anyways, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's not so much a dry brush in a traditional sense as something significantly more heavily heavy handed so that you can. Yeah. Which I, is what I'm all about is that heavy handedness. Well, otherwise you're just, you're not going to get anything out of the contrast paint. So if you put contrast paint on directly over black, you're not going to see shit. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right. Um, I'm seeing if uh, a little bit of water on the base after I put the super glue on will help it uh, solidify up real quick. Because super glue is, uh, super glue likes to. Uh, Interact with those water molecules and maybe I can get it to. Because, you know, pe people kept sticking their fingers together. So everybody had to change their. Uh, everybody had to end up changing their. Uh, their actual. Now, yeah, that's not going to work. Shit. Well, crap on a crutch. What are you talking about with gluing your fingers together? So remember, it used to be you could super glue something down and it would stick like within seconds. Okay. And now, you know, it's, it's, it might, it might stick down really, really good in like 10 or 15 minutes. Other, because it's not, there's the potential of it not drying as fast as you'd like it to. Yeah, I've had that happen before. Yeah. That's what just happened with this guy right here. Oh, it didn't it set didn't. too quickly? Yeah. Gotcha. So hopefully, hopefully he is set. So what I'm doing now is just giving them a real heavy dry brush to hit all of, you know, everything except for the, the deepest cracks, if you will. And hopefully I'm not going to knock him off of his... Knock him off of his base. Because I still want, like, the, the deep, deep recesses to stay black. But everything else have this nice, uh, nice bone look to it. I think every single thing that I'm painting today so far is uh, on the docket. Well, nope, never mind. I was about to say, all but one of them so far are uh, 
3D printed. Nice. Yeah. It's not necessarily something wild for everybody. That's a pretty rapid departure for me most of the time. I really like metal models, to be honest with you. Yeah, there's, there's something nice about the heft. There is, and I don't know. I just, I again, I still prefer that traditional sculpting style in terms of when it comes to me painting them. Right. Um, just because with how deep it is, it's really conducive to my style of painting, to how right. deep the details have to be in a traditionally done or in a traditionally sculpted metal model. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I just, I like it. It works well for, for me. That's what I started painting. That's what I've enjoyed painting for several years now. And it just, it works. The fact that 3D models are in scale is, is frustrating sometimes. Right. Because correct, in scale, the difference like where your shirt is laying over your pants should be nearly indistinguishable, but makes it a bit of a pain in the dick to paint. Like yes, your the the width of your t-shirt at you know one fifty six this small. Come on though. All right. You know what makes me sad? These miniatures I haven't painted. I didn't mess with very much. I printed them out towards the end of last year. But then I missed the, like, after Christmas, Christmas Village sales at Menards. Right. And that's what I was looking forward to painting these for. Because these are, these two are Santas, these three are elves, and then these six are, uh, like, goblins. Right. And so the idea was that I was going to get some of that crap and then do, um, you know, a, a little fight for Christmas Village. But oh, there you go. then I uh, missed that sale opportunity at the meet at the Maynards. And here we are. So now we're painting it now. Okay, and I've got my 11 figures overbrushed. So let's find my contrast blood Templars or Templar blood or whatever. Blood Angels red. Oops. Yeah, you better get that right. You don't want to, uh, you don't want the, uh, don't want all those guys get mad at you. Oh, yeah, you know. Uh, let's let's see, see here. People do that check, before. Check uh, comments here. Um, guys are just chatting away out here on their own. Yeah. Which is fine. Awesome. Love that. No supervision uh, means makes it a lot easier for you. Right. Means we can paint more. Uh, for next week's live stream, there will be a spotlight segment on submarines in World War One. Very nice. That's uh, uh, Ninguea. Nice. I uh, just got a book on Africa in World War One. We'll be using that for source material. What? Uh, what? What book did you get? Uh, thanks for the shout out. You're welcome, buddy. Um, all right. Eight games of World War One, uh, not really new. That Charles says the eight games of World War One, not really new. Tim B. Oh, I know someone had come out with a few, but they were impossible to get around here. One good part of the internet, yeah. Tim B. said hello, Kitty, to uh, to, to Shabby. To who? Shabby or Cabby, one of the two. Oh, Cabby, yeah, his yeah. cat. Yeah. Um, Every, uh, Charles says everything I got in came from NKG. Was it North Korean gaming? What? NKG. Uh, I, I have no idea. 
I do not uh, walk about games. Painting Napoleonic Spanish and more Vietnam. Very nice. Tim B, I'm actually working on uh, raising a box top. Some of those companies don't think. Uh, I do not like the ugly, bright, standard orc green skin colors. Yeah, I've, I've never been a big fan of uh, of that lime green. I'm more of a Kelly green kind of guy. Uh, Super glue likes my fingers, as does mine. Um, the guy hanging from the crane had a harness on. Agreed, but still, his hat was attached. Uh, I think a wee bit of baking soda will make the crazy glue harden much faster. Uh, I got, I got to try that out. It will. It's also a really good way to make absolutely indestructible bases. There's just not a whole lot of texture there but it yeah. will make your basing material beyond indestructible you cannot yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, now they got a super uh, flavor of super glue for everyone I do I prefer the gel um, it, I, I like it because it, it doesn't go running off everywhere um, Chris says I'm a big fan of Gorilla Glue Gel that's also good um, Chris also wants to know what scales uh, other Chris is painting uh, Nguya Chris wants to know what uh, what scales uh, Chris Long's painting Chris Long yeah uh, if it's Chris Long, he's probably picking 28s. I think his Vietnam stuff's in 28. 28s, yeah. Um, we got yeah. Uh, Nikki uh, ba uh, Bauer on here. I'm painting some Star Wars Legion Ewoks. Nice. Yeah, if I finish these up, I'll go grab. Actually, I have Ewoks right here. If I finish these elves up, I'll paint Ewoks. There you go. Uh, the book is The Great War in Africa by Byron Farewell. Uh, that is. In my well, actually, I just took that out of my car. I just finished reading that. It's a fantastic book. Um, I own that. That's a very, very good book. One that seems a little childish, and it, it sort of is, but it has some really good information about the Tanganyika stuff, like the Lake Tanganyika stuff. Is Mimi and Tutu go to war? It's written for like middle schoolers, it seems like, but. There's some really solid information in there, and it does a good job of hitting the salient points of that naval campaign. That's cool. um, also, David Manley's Steamer Wars rulebook has Jeffrey Spicer Simpson's full report in the end, in the back of it, which is pretty slick. Nice. So, yeah, that's that's a really good way to top off that book. Not only is that book really great, the campaign system he puts into it is stellar. And then, yeah, having Spicer Simpson's actual report at the end of it. It's like, it's only like 12, maybe 15 pages, but it's outstanding. Made all the better by the fact that that dude was full blown nuts. But Which yeah. One? Jeffrey Spicer Simpson, the uh, guy who commanded the Royal Navy Detachment on Lake Tanganyika in 1914 and 1915. Oh, okay, cool. The guy who recaptured Lake Tanganyika from Zakrauts by taking Graf von Goetzen, Kingani, Hedvig von Wiesman, and I don't remember. Fun fact, though, the uh, Graf von Goetzen is the only German, or is the only ship of the Kaiserlich Marina still still around it's being used as the mv liemba it's still a uh passenger ferry on lake tanganyika oh, that's very cool. cool right yeah it was transported from dar es salaam to the shores of lake tanganyika in five thousand crates <laughs> jesus just for the germans to assemble it on the shoreline and uh yeah five thousand crates and that was before Amazon. Blown nuts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. That was 100% manpower. Yeah. Kind of like. No. no see, see, Amazon's on the other continent. Yeah. 
they, those two have been up for that. They really haven't been that close since Pangeo, you know. Um, but uh, no, yeah, uh, Mimi and Tutu were also hauled overland to Lake Tanganyika from South Africa, which is likewise a terrifyingly astounding logistical feat, um, given that there's only, you know, only a chunk of that, you know, 2,000 kilometers or something is uh, has rail lines on it. The rest of it was legitimately bushwhacked and uh, had bush roads and bridges and everything else built for these two uh, rather sizable motorboats to get transported across, which is wild. Not to mention the fact that those crazy bastards took essentially two Chris Craft um, motorboats like you would see in a James Bond movie. And put not only a Lewis gun in the stern, but then a three pounder on the front of them. Just wow. like, yeah, okay, this is this is the thing. We're gonna do this. There's there's an empty spot here, and we have these two three pounder guns. So uh yeah. Chapow. Well pow surprise. Bliggity blow, blam blam. I got really sad. Old Glory used to make um a steam tractor and then cargo haulers. Right to, or th- that were specifically d- modeled after the ones used by Spicer Simpson to transport Mimi and Tutu, but by the time I ordered them, the molds were blown, and that was the end of them. And I'm really, really sad that I wasn't able to take advantage of those. But that's okay. I'll cry about it later. Huh. Some more. Cry more, noob. Yeah, you know it. Oh, I'm gonna cry a lot about that. That was one of my most exciting ideas. The idea was to have, you know, some British troops, mainly dismounted Royal Royal Navy troops, um, as well as like King's African Rifles defending that convoy against Let Al Vorbeck and his Askaris. It's a pretty wild what if scenario but it would have been pretty fun to play I think all right I think I will do a light gray on one of these see how it works Chris you're still dry brushing your guys come on homie Uh, dude I am slow you're killing me smalls I know I know I did see uh, Bunkhouse today. Bunkhouse is doing good. Good. He's uh, he's living the dream. He's not gonna make. I don't think he's gonna make it out to uh, March to Victory. He said, but we were talking. Oh, about, that's too bad. Well, he's, he's life is busy. He's got kids. I, and I, I, and I get it. No, I, I I I totally understand, dude. I. But he uh, I think he's he's talking about BattleTech. He's been really into reading the BattleTech stuff recently and the Max. So he has. Battlesuit Alpha. He was talking about trying to run like a uh, a series of connected games, which cool. is pretty sweet. He was asking me about a couple things, and I told him that hey, you should holler. At, you know, send me some days that he's open, or uh, or you, and we could either figure out a way to get out to Columbia to play, or we can put on a virtual game. Right. Right. Devin's in the house. How you doing, Devin? The original Grognard, Mr. Devin. Am I, am I on screen? Oh, got to come over a little bit. I'm still sorry that that first episode, I painted those figures completely off screen and you guys were just catching the weird like cooking show bits of it. Like, oh yeah, now we're going to do this. Oh, here's one that that's been done to. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Well, that's all right. I, I, I adjusted. I moved some light around. I changed how the camera sits. So now we should be catching it full in the face for you fine viewers. Face. Right in the face for you fine viewers. Yeah. And we're, this is, this is my halfway model for the ride, Chris. Come on, buddy. Catch up. This is model number five that I'm putting the red on. Well, yeah, so not well. quite halfway. You are also a much more prolific painter than I am. 
have just that's part of the the byproduct of having eight million projects is might have eight million projects going, but I try and keep up painting on them. I had a I had a moment of weakness yesterday though. I I, I got more ships. Um, Where'd you get off of tumbling dice? Well, so. You know, I have these Spanish American warships in one six hundred, and I've got them in one twelve hundred. Um, so you picked them up in one twenty four hundred. Of course you did, because I have a problem. <laughs> um, and my problem. I would say, do we need to do an intervention? But I would be of no help there. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I would just be too busy the playing problem. with the boats. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so no, I was on, at first I was looking on Panzer Schiff, and that was pretty sweet. Um, I need to get after Sandy Williams and see if they're still, um, if they're still just trying to unload all kinds of stuff. I have no idea. Um, but then I was on Panzer Schiff, and I realized that buying them from Tumbling Dice is actually cheaper. Right. Um, and then I paid for shipping on Tumbling Dice and realized it was probably just about even. But I really do like the steel ships that you get from Tumbling Dice. Right, uh, right. Because I'm primarily painting these for the joy of painting them. Right, if I if it comes to the point where I want to game with them, especially on a routine basis, I'll definitely order them from Panzer Shift just because you cannot beat the durability on those stinking models, man. Um, right. They are just one monolithic cast piece of resin, and I love them for that. Uh, but since I was trying to do this for a, a bit of a fun project, I don't know if I'll pay, try and paint them up if I get them by that 24 hour thing or what, but, um, the, uh, I'm actually really looking forward to that. And I'm hoping Brian can join us for a huge amount of that. Cause yeah, I feel like, uh, between he and I over the course of 24 hours, we can really put the hurt on some, uh, on some unpainted on a lead pile. I mean, you were there for the last 24 hour thing. I wound up painting like 40 something, 15 millimeter tanks. Like, Oh yeah. You went ham dude. Like 30, uh, world war two U S 28 millimeter infantry. Like it, yeah, it got out of hand, especially cause I didn't, I was going on like 36 hours of no sleep by the end of that. Cause I wasn't able to, I wound up having to work the day before. Right. I remember that. Um, dog, I had a great time. Um, but yeah, so I mean, but I feel like warm up and I could, it, it'd be, a, it could be potentially a pretty impressive end of stream kind of showcase if we can both really just stay hammered down the whole time. Right. Um, but that also means I need to prime a bunch god that, that boy is primed so much stuff Sweet oh, yeah, yes. um i need to do that too the issue is i've been painting like a madman for the analog hobbies painting challenge which i actually just hit uh part of the analog hobbies painting challenge is the little like side challenge quest things which are really fun but basically it's just a bunch of different stuff right so you can just get on there and paint whatever you want to like you know you're just trying to get it's a, it's it's only a challenge against yourself, right? You're not competing with anybody else, but right. So you're trying to compete for your points, but then there's also like themed little little things that you can do if you want to participate and do those. Just because if you're like me and you've got 80 million different things sitting around, it's a good way to get you motivated to paint some stuff that you know wouldn't necessarily jump to the fore of your painting schedule. Um, right. So I've been doing that a whole lot, and I got to the end of those so i think that was 10 or 11 different you know little side challenges that i hammered out and painted up and so now i'm to the end of that which is something that the the guy who runs it kurt he gives you a, a final category and he told me to find something that has been sitting around for a long time that i haven't painted um so I think what I'm going to do is go over to my parents' house where in the basement they've still got some of my really old models. There you go. And find what looks like the oldest unpainted model I can find. Or not necessarily oldest, but one that I've had for the longest that I have not painted. 
Right. And we'll see uh, what that is and if I can put a herd on it or if I can find a unit that's been down there for a long time or something like that, then we'll, we'll get, get to going, you know. That's cool. Should be quite, quite entertaining. Um, but yeah, I already, I'm already behind in posting things to that, which makes me sad. Um, Cause I have no problem painting stuff, but posting it and catching up to it, that it's yeah. technology, man. It kills me. Uh, let's see. Oh, me and Mike has joined us. Hey, Mike. Mr. Mike, how are you? Um, yeah, we, we had 10 watching only four thumbs up. Yeah, go, go, go smash you the likey button if you want, if you can. Yeah, hit that like, subscribe for all the content yeah. so you get notified when we post new videos. Yeah, exactly what he said. Um, so, uh, Chris uh, Nguaya says, I'm well trained by now. First thing I do, uh, unlike what I was like when I was first started watching the uh, Hoser House Rules channel. Yeah, support the other, uh, we support the other way here. Um, Chris Long says, I can't just have one project, I have to have five or six at a time. Yeah, exactly, Chris. I have uh, like Andrew, six or seven sitting right yeah. here within, you know, thumbs reach, but yes. Um, Andrew Mike says, I understand the versatility of minis needing assembly, but I really don't want to put on arms and hands with weapons and heads and whatever, uh, whoever else knows what. Yeah, I, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Um, now, that being said, uh, Atomic Mass Games has done a pretty good job of with their plas their the plastic models that they they've got coming out for for Star Wars. Uh, the the option bits that they've got actually go together pretty well. They're they're not difficult to put together, unlike. Uh, Unlike War Games Factory. War Games Factory, or as much as I hate to say it, um, um, got uh, foot sore miniatures. Yeah. Well, do they have plastics? No. Oh, you mean their metals? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, those uh, those gangs of Rome metal. Oh, uh, yeah. They, some of those are disastrous. Yeah. They were. Uh, like they're cool looking models, figures, but damn, yeah. Well, neat looking models, but it doesn't matter because for the longest time you weren't able to buy the dang things, anyways. Well, they're coming out uh, on the fifteenth of this month. They've got uh, version two hitting Kickstarter. Accurate. Yep. Um, I won't do the Kickstarter on those, uh, but I will see uh, what's coming out. Apparently, you will be able to if you are interested in that type of a game. Uh, and you bought the original Gangs of Rome, you'll be able to use your old Gangs of Rome models. Oh, that's cool. Which is nice. Awfully nice of them, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you got that going for you. Um, I'm really sad I didn't wind up. there. The first set they came out with for Gangs of Rome, Blood on the Aventine, was yeah. beyond stellar. And by the time I wised up to that, the rest of the world had wised up to that. And Footsore, you know, they only did like one run of that. Um, yeah. Luckily, since then, Sarissa has put out that little Roman temple that they shipped that game with, which is yeah. part of the awesome part, like the under construction temple. They don't God, have that's the, been, that is a great little temple. It is. And they don't have the whole thing that came with the Gangs of Rome thing, but they've got the partially constructed temple part, and that's pretty right. slick. Um, but yeah, I was a big fan of that. Um, I got the second one where it came with the bakery and I painted all those figures up. Those were another group of figures that I, those might've been the first ones I ever did with contrast paint. Um, yeah, I, I've got that and I was working on the, uh, the bakery, the bakery. And I, I screwed up real bad. I started building up before I painted it. Uh, yeah, I like to at least base coat those things before I glue them yeah. together. 
And so I, I got about halfway built and <sighs> it's still downstairs. It's still downstairs waiting. I mean, to a certain extent, if you've built it to the point where you can't get to the interior to paint it, then you also can't get to the interior to paint it. So you don't have to worry about it. Like, you right. know what I mean? Is that the yeah. issue? Um, partially, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. that, that's a bit of a self, <laughs> self-curing problem. Right. Okay, here's my white... Ah, here's my black Templar, exactly what I'm looking for. You just painted, you just had a black. Chris, what are you painting black again for? Um, there's leather bits on them. You silly goose. Yep, well. Is what it is, right? Pardon me while I get out all of my contrast colors. Look at me, I'm Chris, and I have all like 70 something contrast paints. Oh, uh, no, just the original 32 or whatever it was. <laughs> it's still a nice Call collection. it an even 69. There's no such thing as an even 69. That's what you think. That's a great 69, but not necessarily even. It would take some incredible coordination. It would. Last one on the red. All right. Let's go ahead and back over here. This was actually my my pro, my first idea for a Christmas game. My second idea for a Christmas game was those uh, ancients, those classical Roman looking guys. Well, they look like Judeans, which is which is correct because it was supposed to be the Bethlehem beatdown. Yeah, but I painted those guys up, and then that game never really got got off the ground, which made me kind of sad. But that's all right. We'll, we'll we'll get it next year. We'll get them again in the second half. Um, but yeah. So. This, I'm going to start with this guy here. Oh, come on. Um, where are you? There you are. Um, I don't know why we're not focusing well. Because as long as you've got something go. in the background, there you are. So this, this is a character. It is... His race, his species is a Deveronian. And uh, the actor that actually played that particular character is one of my favorites, uh, Clancy Brown. Uh, you might also know him from uh, you might also know him as uh, the Kurgan from the original uh, Highlander. But what I'm doing is I'm looking up to see if I can find that character's name so I can look up the said character so I can see what he's supposed to look like. So when I paint him... That's at least close. Yeah. Clancy Brown just got a role in the Penguin Show. What Penguin Show? Not quite sure what y'all are talking about. Oh, come on. IMDB, why are you being a dick? Is that some DC title? Probably because IMDB knows you're supposed to be... Ah, oh, crap. You're supposed to be on the... On the on the paint, IMDb knows Chris. Uh -huh. They know, man. They know, man. All 
or at least that's that's my bet. Seems like a pretty solid bet. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, IMDB is being a complete twat waffle right now. Dude, then don't worry about it. Just keep painting. That's why we're here. I want to look to see what these guys look like. Rod- Rodeans, right? No. Deveronian. Oh. Well, you've seen him. He's on the cover of that game. That latest uh, lock and load game. No, see, that would be Devin. It's close enough. He's a little paler than... Uh... Well, then, bam, you already know what they look like. You're yeah, go me. for it. Yeah, dude. Sure. Devin, I appreciate it. Get after it, man. I believe in you. I don't know that I have a green contrast paint. I might have blue goblins. It's all good. Depending on the uh, the season, oh. sometimes they were blue. There's there's a green. Maybe they're just really cold. But I found a green. I have militarum green. Ooh, how long do you think it's been since I painted with this thing? Oh yeah. Green, white, green, white, green, white, green, white. Gonna sound really inappropriate for about five minutes, probably. Here, I'll keep my hands yeah, on the screen. Yeah, so you know, I'm shaking that, that'll take a while. That'll take a while. No change. I have this speed paint orc skin, but I don't know how well that looks like a really, really bright green. Kind of better. That looks really dark, like a camo color. Excuse me. Oh, this is this is the color I was using on those sentinels and stuff. I don't think this is the color I'm looking for. This color here is this, this green. The color we're looking for? Yeah, this is not the not the green we're looking for. Okay, let's try, uh, maybe we'll try that speed paint. Orc skin, that makes sense. They're goblins, that's kind of like an orc. <laughs> Same though, green, not green. Dark green, light green, dark green, light green. Okay. The bright side is these army painter guys came with agitators in them. That was pretty cool of army painter. Yeah. Okay, so he is... Dog, maybe that's it. Maybe these like goblins and elves and, and nonsense will fight the, the monks with guns and stuff for control of Christmas. There you go. There we go. We can call it retaking Christmas. Hey, um, how red is that Blood Angels red? Pretty red, dog. Like, is it like red, red? Yeah. Here. Good. Okay. Okay. It's what I use for like scarlet and crimson like the uh uniforms on my like here's that just straight on to a tan for royal marines from like right. the 1750s it's what i use for my british and anglo zulu stuff um it's what i use for these guys yeah it's what i use for red lightsabers over like a a really light silvery white all right Oh, hey, Warmut, how you doing, buddy? Hey, Warmut, what's up, buddy? He's what about to go watch. About uh, he's about to go watch the Mandalorian. Watching the Mandalorian. I need a clean uh, repository for this this paint. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh, guys. I don't know what I got anywhere clean to drop this army paint or speed paint into. Um, uh, what are these? Oh, I got these from from uh, Miniature Market for like two dollars. These are some of those uh, 2000 AD or whatever, or no, the Slancha or Slan or whatever their game they came out with. 
I don't know, but they're like Celtic Amazonian ladies. Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, I thought they were metal, though. They're that weird warlord resin. Oh, yeah. It's not my favorite, to be honest with you. Also, they're kind of giant. Well, if they're Amazonians, well, aren't they yeah. supposed to be? Well, yeah, but they're not like traditional Amazonians. Like, they have both boobs. They didn't cut their their uh-huh. left one off so they could be better archers and stuff. Like, I only said they're Amazonians because they're, like, warrior ladies. Not necessarily because they are canonical giant Amazonians. Mm. Or Amazons. I guess they don't have to be Amazonians. They're just Amazons, aren't they? Most likely. But, that being said, they could be people for Jason and his Argonauts to fight. There once you I go. Get, once I get Chad and Dakota and Tyler done. Is that the Battle of the Country Club? Well, I mean, if the guy's name is Jason, I figure he's got to have some some buddies named like again Tyler and Dakota and Chad. Oh, yeah, that's stuff. the frat house. Yeah. Yeah. Biff, Todd. Oh, Todd. 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 Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll just have like Todd, Jeff, Brian, Chris, all of Jason's buddies. Mike. Okay, now, uh, Doug, that is a Tamiya model of the Yubari, you said? Yep, it's a light cruiser. Damn near a big destroyer. Yeah, I feel like... ship I've built for years, and I've got another copy of this kit, but with the photo etch, which I've never done. So this is kind of a warm-up. For the basic kit, for me to realize that I'm in over my head, <laughs> because I've already gone, dang, this is small. And that photo etch is like another level smaller. Now we'll see how I do. We shall see. So here's the other kit. And it's got all this lovely stuff. Old oh, baby brass. Small, small, small. Four sh- different little sheets of stuff. Teensy weensy, man. I know. This is going to be a challenge. But I'm up to it. What's the worst thing? I waste 30 bucks, right? Yep, pretty much. Well, let's be honest, we've always 30 bucks on dumber stuff than Photo Edge. Yeah, I had a girlfriend once. Exactly. Well, more than once, but you get the you get the joke. That's all right. We believe you. Okay, let's not mix these parts now. That would not be fun. Well, that did not turn out the way I was expecting it to. Yikes, this is a ridiculously bright green. Holy shnikey. Uh, I may have messed up. Well, I might have messed up also. Sorry, I'm still rolling. Yeah, but you got to roll with it, man. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, that's that's where I'm headed. We are rolling right along. All gas, no brakes, baby. Rolling, rolling. Keep them doggies rolling. Yeah, you guys can't really see much other than a gray stick in my hand, but you know. let's see this. That's all right. You're going to be a gray blob for a while. It's all right. We understand. Yeah. We're all. At some point, I'll get a decent camera. I'm just using the laptop now, obviously. Or maybe I'm just not. using. This is just my phone, man. It's all good. 
Well, I got my phone on over the top because I'm videoing it to maybe make a, uh, an episode for my builds channel. Oh, there you go. So I'm trying to multi-record, multi, you know, leverage oh, my time into two pieces of content, as it were. Oh, man. Worst thing is, again, it fails. It's not a big deal. This won't fail. If the video fails, the video fails. That is bright. These guys are Christmassy. See, I'm looking at this going, is this too big to game with? I mean, well, I have a whole rack of 1700, and it's going to get gamed the same way as my uh, 1600 scale Spanish American stuff. It's just going to be gamed out on a floor, not on a table. Yeah. Again, I guess I can buy. I, I've got those uh, Ocean Thunder rules, which, by the yeah, way, are my favorite uh, rule set for this this period. Although they are my only rule set for this period, but that's counts. Hey, neither here nor there. It counts. You heard it here first, guys. That we did. Hold on one second. <sighs> had to take off the uh, had to take off the Wiley sweatshirt. Oh no! What? Who are getting a little warm up in here. What's that? Who are we sponsored by now? Um, Cal. My alma mater. Central Missouri State University, home of the fighting mules. There you go. Go Mo. Man, they started doing that like LSU says go Tigers. So like G-E-A-U-X. Uh-huh. And then M E A U X, and it was one of just the dumbest. Like, no, you guys got to stop. You look just beyond stupid. Who um, the people who were that was a student thing that they did for a while. They put it on like shirts and stuff. Oh, for like Mizzou? No, for like Central Missouri State. Oh, they did. Oh, pff, I don't. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know that I ever specifically saw any for Mizzou, but certainly saw some in the Dirty Berg. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That was a little odd. Yeah, not sure I'm liking how he's turning out. So, all right, finish the paint job and we'll revisit. Yeah, that, that's interesting. That's exactly what my dad said about me. <laughs> there you go. Jackpot. Yeah, look at how like minty green these goofs are. Well, it is a Christmas fight. It is a Christmas fight, but damn, man. <laughs> this took that annoying Games Workshop green and turned it up to 11. Right. <laughs> this one goes to 11. Yeah. All right, I'm going to set him aside. I'm not going to worry about him right now. I am, however. Can we go to the next model? Oh, we got we got Mo Doug and Ill Doug in the house. We got Punk House. Hey, buddy. Oh, come on. Yeah, I I I wish I could avoid uh, the uh, the model section at the local hobby shop, but uh, when you're when you're wanting to game with one seven hundred scale submarines. Kind of got to just I was playing U boat yesterday, man. I had a lot of fun with that. Is that the like phone assisted game? Uh, no, or I don't a different. Believe it's phone assisted. So I played on my PC. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, there's a board game called U Boat. That like has a weird 3D model of a U Boat, and then you have to like download an app to play it. It's a little odd. Uh, I tried playing it with a buddy of mine. It was all right. We were just trying to figure out how to make the phone thing work. Like we weren't even trying to win. We were just trying to find something so what either we could sink it or it could sink us. 
<laughs> we couldn't find anything. It's kind of one of those, well. Oh, I had I'm trying to – the UI in this game is a bit wonky, to say the least. Adrian Mike wants to know if we use painting handles. No. Oh, I, Mike. I used to. I don't have any. But you know what? I have a 3D model of one that I could put together when I start painting so I can put some miniatures the, on there. The closest thing I have had with a, a handle is this right here. I was about to say, I have a whole bunch of old paint pots that, uh, that you they were stick them on top up. of. Yeah, and I, I styles require require. Okay, that's a strong word, but it's for stability, right? And you're if you're doing ultra detailed type of stuff, sometimes those are very helpful. But that mainly you know, so you're not touching the model. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. I I, I was watching um, as you guys know, Wapple do some work, and he didn't have one, and he was painting some really detailed stuff. So that's why I, I yeah. don't want to say it's required because when you're good, you can you know. You have your exactly. techniques that, that work, whether you have those tools or not. But that's right. not to begrudge the tools either, because I'm sure, you know, somebody like me, that would be very useful. I want to say, I think Brian still uses them a lot. Um, I, I think he got some um, a year and a half or so ago. But, yeah. Um, again, I've, I've used them in the past. They're certainly handy, especially when you have models, yeah, that um, – I just use cork. What's up? I just had cork. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, Yeah, I'm about to say a lot of people use corks. I don't drink enough. I don't really drink wine, so I don't have any corks. But yeah, I mean, you use whatever's around that. that well, works. you can get corks at Michael's. In well, like that's a, fair. But I had a bunch course. of empty you don't paint have bottles around. Wine, but I got gotcha. you. But again, I had a bunch of empty paint bottles around, so it was one of those. Okay, well, there you go. I dumped. Um, if there yeah, was still works. a little bit of paint in the bottom. I just dump sand into them. Otherwise, I put sand in and then dribbled some Elmer's glue on top. And that gave them more than enough weight to hold up, even with metal models on them. Uh, okay. But so especially when I'm painting stuff for like multi-basing or something that doesn't have a base on it for whatever reason, they're super useful. So like when I'm painting gun crews, I tend to use them because I want to paint them, then glue them onto a big base. So I don't necessarily want to be handling the model. Like usually I, I work based off of the uh, the washer. Sometimes I'll get a finger up on the head like you're seeing me do with these guys. But yeah, when I'm doing multi-base stuff, I'll, I'll pull them out and use them. Uh, and I'm going to have to give me one of those overhead lamps with a magnifying glass. Oh, the little ring things? Yeah. So if I'm going to do this with the... this With the photo etch? Yeah. Yeah, and especially when it comes to like what doing I'm the doing. folding and stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, it was you know, $30, $35 set. And if I screw it up, the model's not that expensive. I'll learn something. I'll have fun. And uh, we'll try it again. Not only that, but if you screw up the photo etch, you still have all the original pieces from the model. So you're, you're still going to be able to put the model together just like the other one. Yeah, except that piece I just pinched and it shot it across the room. I'm never going to find that piece. Well, you don't need that piece. It's optional. Well, it is now. Exactly. Actually, Any piece is optional. I, hand pass. I don't you know. Yeah, dude. My tweezer skills need work, too. Oh, well. Any piece is optional if you're brave enough. Just like any, any ship can be a submarine once or a minesweeper once. Yeah, well, if somebody looks at this and starts pointing out where I've messed up, then more power to them. You just I'll give them a cookie. Tell them to move along. Right. Oh, no, I, I'll engage them. I'll say, you know what? That's really good, really sharp. I'm impressed. I did that on purpose just to see if I could find somebody like you that could point that out to me. So thank you, and here's your cookie. I don't have anything else to put this green on, and I'm not actually too uh, disappointed in that. That green is not my favorite. Okay, orc skin, you're going back up here to not be used for quite a while. The issue is I have that much left in here, and I feel like I'm wasting it. I just hate losing bits. That's that's the thing. Yep. Is that I'm going to know that that's always going to be missing. 
Now, what I'll do Just is when I build when the other one, if that piece happens to be photo etched, then I'll take the plastic one from the other kit and put it on this one just so I can sleep at night because I'm weird. I still say as soon as the stream's over, just vacuum your room and then never worry about it again. <laughs> if only I could. Oh. <clears throat> Excuse me. What, are you telling me you don't have a vacuum? No, I just can't let things go like that. Oh. It, it'll bother me and I'll be okay. I mean, battle damage. It's just radar. It's a little, little T radar piece. So, yeah, there's no hope. I need to invent or create. Oh, there it is. I found it. Oh, the odds. Now I'll be sleeping tonight, unless I lose it again. Eh, what's worse that could happen? Um, nothing, actually. See? You're ahead of the game. Okay, we're going to try this again. The... the being on the floor with a flashlight, tell you what I've 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 had to do that before with is a two millimeter screw for the inside of an iPhone. Gross! What the fuck? Gross! Well, you know, was it a customer's iPhone? Yep. Yeah, so you kind of got to. Oh come Pain on! Pain in the. And you know you got to get on your team, right? When, the when uh, when you're down there, and you know they haven't swept for a while, and you tell them to sweep every night before they close, and you're down there, and there's fucking lint bunnies bigger than the damn uh, damn screw. I mean, it's a two mil screw. I want to say, yeah, we used to get those every now and then in various workplaces I've been in. Where it's just, you got these things the size of like ping pong balls almost that are just hanging out like, guys, come on. Yeah. It's like, dude, I what told you shit? to sweep every night. Shit like, doesn't grow this much in a night. Well, not only that, but it's like, dog, we have a dust mop that's easy as shit. I know. Like, it's barely even sweeping. You're just wandering around for a minute. You're done. <clears throat> yep. You just kind of, I mean... You're already doing the the primary objective, walking up and down the aisle. Yeah, just push just put the broom in front of you. of you. Jesus, you will be my hero. It's it's not it's not rocket surgery. Ho ho ho! Don't, don't get that far. It could be rocket appliances. What color do I want to use here? Okay. I accidentally just put skin tone on this guy's boots, and now I feel like a dickhead. Well, you, you just, boots, you just so. stop somebody's face in. Oh, dang, man! This is an elf, man. He's got a big old hammer. You you said you didn't you you said you didn't like uh you didn't like doing boots. So I do hate um, I do hate painting boots, man. Oh crap! Okay. My camera. So what the heck? The thing with uh, um, iPhone screws is they are only slightly magnetic, and what I mean by that is they're so teeny tiny. They well, they're contact magnetic. So if you put them onto a magnetic screwdriver, they will stick. But you put a magnet next to them, they will not be drawn to the magnet. What the hell, come? Bizarre that, satanic apple magic is that? They're made out of aluminum with a bit of ferrous material. Aluminium? No, aluminum. <laughs> well, remember in our 24-hour stream when you have guests from across the pond? 
It's they can say aluminium. aluminium all they want. I will continue to say aluminum. You're the except, host. They're guests. Except for Harrington. Harrington's not allowed to say aluminium. All right. That boy knows better. I hope he's hey, hammered hey, we'll, right we'll, now watching this because I would die laughing if he's still farting around somewhere on the continent giggling at this at this point in the night. I think he's already... I think he's already home, unfortunately. He is. He's home. He is 100% home, but that's okay. I forgive him anyhow. Johnny is a great guy. Johnny. Oh, Harrington? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Prime A1 dude. Absolutely. I think um, he needs Illinois to make the march to victory. Says, uh, how much for a sponsorship? Uh, what what sponsorship are you looking to to sponsor? For March to Victory? If it's March to Vic- Victory, if you go to marchtovictory.net and click on the uh, extra, or does uh, Illinois Doug want to be want, want to sponsor us? Uh, either way. Because that costs like, I don't know, a couple of coupons to the Sizzler or maybe like a bag of Funyuns when we're gaming. Right. I'm going to say, if you make it to March to Victory and you bring pizza and, and have it at whatever game Steve is putting on, you, you're you're automatically a channel oh my sponsor God. for life. Automatically. Yeah. Automatic yeah. life channel sponsor. Yeah, and, and, and the greasier the pepperoni, the better. Oh my lord! Yeah, make it just. He That's, likes it real greasy. It, it, it it's that old the old fashioned pepperonis, you know, the, the little ones that curl up. Oh yeah, with a brown crispy balls. edge. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Th- that yeah. that's the ones that he he loves and, and eat it as close to him as possible. So now we're on to food. Well, no, somewhere we need to find. That uh, what do you mean? Yeah, we're just talking pizza. Steve. No, it well, it's because we were giving Steve trouble because we took a picture of some kid eating pizza right next to his models, and it was greasy, nasty pizza. And so then somewhere there's a picture of me standing just, um, just way too into Steve's personal space. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh eating, yeah, eating a slice of pizza. Just with the dumbest grin on my face, because I was trying not to laugh, and that was beyond impossible. Um, but oh my lord, I was right up in Steve's grill. He could smell the pizza. He could smell my breath with the pizza on it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but and that's he was a good friends. sport about it. But you know. Yeah. Well, that's why you have friends. Yeah. Well, Stevie's good people also. Stevie is one of the best of people. I hear this year, guys, at March to Victory, he's going to be running out with no shirt on. We keep hoping for that to happen, and unfortunately, I don't know, it never... I don't know why that happening. became my fixation is what I'm going to mess I, with I don't with. know. But it's I'm just going to keep keep it going, man. That's just where I'm going to go. You just you Hey, again, you just roll with it. Yeah, exactly. You just got to do it until, you know, eventually he's going to do it. And then I'm going to find something else and I'm feel real sad. Right. But until then, here we are. So, okay. So this, so I got, I backed off of contrast paints quite a bit recently here. Just because I was having such a good time going back to the roots and doing the the block wash Uh, but then i did add coming back in with a highlight um to my old just block paint and wash to success which is still a very valid way to do especially if you're going to do a lot of troops man and especially if you're doing a smaller scale block paint wash to success never look back um right but at 28s i did start coming back in and doing highlights and stuff and all that nonsense which you know, neither here nor there, but good stuff. Not a problem. Uh, but this this method, just because I got kind of 
I got kind of tired of that effect that contrast paints have on everything. Um, yeah. But this has brought me back to it. Doing this technique is not too bad. I kind of like it. Um, so I'm happy. I'm happy that good. this is a good good topic to add or to to walk people through. Um, but yeah, because it's certainly not the original like you know design pitch for contrast paints which is just paint the thing white and then put these on like you know a black paint but it is certainly a very functional way to use them right exactly which is honestly you know it's against what all i don't want to say all against what a lot of the quote-unquote professional painters will tell you that it's you know cheating See, that's not professional um, painters. That's people who are butthurt and look hippie. Like, well, yeah. Because you talk the, to, like, again, Jimmy uses them all the time. Oh, um, yeah. There's well, plenty he, of, he, he almost treats them like oils. He does. Well, he had that entire series that he did for a short while there about painting with contrast paints. Because enough people were painting with contrast paints and saying, hey, how do I do this with contrast paints? He's like, all right, well, fine. I'll do a series about painting with contrast paints. Um, and they're just another tool in his tool chest. Um, well, if you're a professional in the sense of painting on commission and they look good, you're not going to do masterpiece. You're not going to do 100 masterpieces for a client. You don't got the time. Well, that's, yeah, and that's his point, except that that dude just produces masterpieces. But yes, that's that, that was his whole point was just there are certainly a time saving measure and there's very good instances where, yes, jumping into a contrast paint is a solid option. Right, um, because it is, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. He's exactly right. Um, but like, just looking at these guys, they're going together, gangbusters. I mean, I'm down to not many colors left to do. To be honest with you, it's a pretty straightforward little kit. And a few fiddly bits to do. Yeah, no, they're. I didn't have really any problems with any of the one seven hundred stuff that I did in, until I hit a couple of Flyhawk kits, and those are kind of a giant pain. Like the hood was obviously more involved because the superstructure is far more involved, right? <clears throat> but even then, it's not bad. And honestly, the only reason I have hood is because I wanted an E class, a British E class destroyer, and buying the E class on its own was thirty bucks and buying hms hood that comes with a free e-class was like 37 <laughs> so at that point in time not You're only getting was an I e-class on shipping but hood for seven bucks was a pretty good deal yeah exactly yeah you're, you're That's buying the way i would have looked at it too yeah, 30 bucks you're, you're, for the, for the yeah e-class, but the hood's only seven boom done yeah i just got a battle cruiser for seven dollars done destroyers cost 30 um <laughs> yeah that was it's all how you pretty, frame it, man. Yeah, exactly. That was pretty fantastic. All right, let's see. All right, guys. Um, Bar down, ski, Chris. Come on, buddy. Let's uh, let's take a look at her. How far are you? <clears throat> oh, here, bigger eyes yourself, dog. Yeah. Like you can't show off your model without embiggerizing yourself you or embiggering yourself, whatever we're calling it nowadays. Oh, looking good, dude. Oh, look at her. That looks like what's her name from the superhero movies? The lady with the big ass hammer. No idea who you're talking about. Uh, Harley Quinn. There you go. Yeah, like her. She got like uh, like clubs and spades and stuff on her, right? Like card yeah. suits. Okay. Harley Quinn. Harley there Quinn, there you go. 110%. And then this was the Deveronian I was I was working on. Okay, seriously. He, he is going to have to get some highlighting done on him. Oh, dude, he looks super red. One thing you might do with him is, are you talking about highlighting the red? No, 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 no. Oh. No, he's supposed to be that red. Oh, okay. No, I'm talking about the the... The coat and the pants and whatnot. Oh, okay. 
because it 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 did not contrast the way it's supposed to contrast at all. Again, that's that's part of that issue that I have with painting 3D printed miniatures with contrast paints is because the detail is so shallow. It yeah. really doesn't. It doesn't necessarily. It, it, it isn't what, capable. What of kind of three D miniatures? Because I've got some that have amazingly good detail. No, no, no. Sure. It's not that there's. It's not that it's bad detail. It's that contrast paint really needs deep and kind of large recesses to work really. Yeah, no, well. that's what I'm saying. I've got some three D prints that have really good detail yeah. like that. That would be fine. That's perfectly. And that, that's outstanding. It might just be the model that you were you're working with that well, maybe that, didn't have it. That's what I'm saying. I think that your 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 3D prints with deep and, and wide details are kind of more the exception, because unfortunately, like Chris's Skull Forge minis are out like incredible miniatures. But well, anything kind of, with capes, it's not going to be very good on. Like this thing, not 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 the best. These Ewoks are 3D printed. Those are sculpted very well for contrast paints, um, but. It seems like it's it's more a if, if I'm painting 3D printed miniatures, it seems like it's far more common for me to paint one with contrast and go, oh wow, that actually looks good, as opposed to the opposite, right? Like, um, it's part of the reason why I switched back to just doing that block and and wash, but yeah, um, and it makes sense. I mean. Games Workshop very intentionally formulated paints that work well with their models and not 3D printed models because they kind of hate the fact that people are 3D printing models. Um, but yeah, and Games Workshop models, you know, by and large have that super deep, um, you know, heavy detail. Not right. Really, really even even stuff. their even their resin stuff is very very. Exactly. Distinct. It's still tr it's still traditionally sculpted. Um, right. Whether it's done 3D or, you know, by hand, it's still that same style. Right. Of of figure. Yeah. Well, not to be a contrarian, I don't think 3D printing has anything to do with the the, the deepness of it. I think it's the sculpt, whether it's traditionally it, done or done on a 3D printer. I, um, I agree with you. My point is that a lot of 3D printers model things at full scale. So that they can get the scale correct and then shrink down to your given scale that you're gaming in, which makes sense. It's, it's a more accurately scaled model, but that's kind of a byproduct and a thing that happens more in the 3d printing community by far than anywhere, you know, in traditional model building. I'm not saying that it's, it's 3d printing's fault or anything. It's just the, the yeah, methodology. No. Behind well, I, I don't I don't know if that's true either about the sculpting doing it larger and shrinking it. <clears throat> a lot of times because you can zoom in on your 3D software, that whole concept of doing it larger doesn't apply. You just zoom in and you can do it to scale and get as much detail as you need. You don't need to oversize it and shrink it, not when you're using 3D software. Now, there may be other people might do that, but th there's no need for it. You just zoom on your screen and you're done i you I, I, I get that that's my that's my point regard i mean whether you're zooming in or sculpting it larger you get my point you're you're sculpting in a much finer detail than you can whether that's sculpting a huge and sinking and shrinking it or just essentially using a microscope to sculpt it's it's the same effect the, yeah the, the point is when you hand sculpt the difference between and, and this is something that he had said earlier the difference between your pants and your t-shirt on a traditionally sculpted miniature is going to be a lot greater than when you are sculpting it with 3D software. It's just a, 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 a reality of the material, right? Like that's a relatively fine line, but it's still drastically deeper than this line, this line you know, these two lines, the line on the boots there. Like, it's just, this is true to scale. This is not. But because it's not true to scale, because it kind of can't be, because you can't zoom way in 
and do that on a traditional figure because even if you're able to get that diesel on there, it's going to be lost to your master. This by default works a little bit better for for ease of miniature painting because on this guy, you're basically freehanding his boots in there. Again, it's not a fault. It's just a different thing and a preference. Okay. What color do they... What color should I make the little crown-looking things on these guys' hats? Yellow? Uh, it seems a little I mean, weird, but... I'm going to big in you so we can see what you're talking about. Oh, I missed the wild one on this guy. So these goblin guys have this little crown thing on their hats. Oh. And I don't know what color well, to make it. White? No, I don't know. They're not supposed... To, these aren't the good Christmas guys, like Santa. Oh. His hat's obviously going to be white. This Santa's right. hat's obviously going to be white. I think we have Chris Kringle and Dingle Kringle here. And Dingle, there you go. Um, but so those guys, they're obviously going to have white on their hats. Who's Dingle Kringle. Tim uh, says tan. Okay, tan. There you go. That's yeah. Or a dark brown. Dingle Kringle is Santa's kind of not as smart little buddy. His his brother. <laughs> like the his first cousin or something. Is, yeah. Is, is it? Uh, it's actually uh, Chris Dingus. Yeah, Dingus Kringle. Oh man! But yeah, no, it's. I I I didn't realize I hadn't caught my local gaming group up to my uh, Star Wars antics of the last few months. Because oh. they all play Legion and shit, which I I don't. But so one of them was like, "Hey, weren't you painting up some Star Wars stuff?" with that painting challenge. And I said, yeah, but not really like Legion stuff, man. Um, <laughs> definitely leaning on the sillier side with Darth Brooks and whatever the Canadian Jedi was named and Dale the Intimidator and Kenny Rogers or Kenny Rogers. Um, See, Kenny Rogers should no. have been a... Uh... Should have been a uh, battle droid. Kenny Roger Roger. You mean, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? And Kenny Rojas, the gambler. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's Dayel and Darth, Bro Darth Brooks' buddy. He's a gambler. His name's Kenny K-E-N-I-R-O-J-S. Kenny Rogers. There you go. Yeah, because then we got him. We got, as you guys both know, Darth Darth Brooks. Right. We've all seen Darth Brooks before. Um, where's Dale? I like the Dale. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, Dale, the, uh, the 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 racing pilot. Here he is. That that's uh, D A I dash E L. Yeah, Dale. 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 He's the intimidator. Um, and then here's his here's How his do you speaker. Not like that? There's his speeder. What Dale? Dale and his speeder. How, so, how, how do we how do we even talk like that? It's a little beat you up. Live so close to the damn Ozarks, you pick it up. And it's not quite as beat up as this one. Everybody's got a white a white white vehicle in their yard. It's all beat up. <clears throat> Is that one on center blocks? Uh, it's about as close as you can be in a galaxy. For, or a, see, that's the thing. This is a long, long time ago, but in a galaxy not that far away. To be honest with you. Yeah, it's just it's just a, a bit down I forty four. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> um, you got them, and then uh, living sixty nine beer stores north of uh, Darth Brooks is this little Canadian Jedi. Big oh, yeah. fan of the big fan of the Labatt Blues down there. Nice. Um, and then I have those goofy shore troopers with like the water wings and stuff. You guys have seen those. This is a, a evil speeder pilot, Ref Jordan. <laughs> he drives a, a, a he, he flies a speeder for an evil plasteel company. And then I got his whole Dunlop. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. And then I got all his guys painted up like that. These are some kind of alien that had like face flaps or something. But I just painted them like Fu Manchus and ran with that. 
face flaps. Go. Oh, those yeah, are Madonna's. What? Those are Madonna's. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out what else I have Star Wars in here. I think of those guys, it's just this line of shore troopers. But, again, we've already seen those guys. So, maybe I'll sneak those on. Is Steve run- Steve is running a Star Wars game. Yes, he is. Oh, man. Yes, he sneak- is. I should sneak some of those guys on there. Um, oh, yeah. Then I found this lady who's wearing, like, a moo. And she's got, like, the 80s poofy hair. Or, like, the 70s poofy hair, like Loretta Lynn. I meant to paint her up. She's Dale's wife. Or Dale's lady friend. Stand by your man. Yeah, exactly. I should call her, like... I should figure out some weird way to get Jolene, like, all Star Wars named up. Loretta. Oh, yeah. this These guys, they need... Light brown. I'm thinking uh, Agros Dunes or maybe Skeleton Bone. Where is it? There is Skeleton Horde. Okay, looks like I'm doing Skeleton Horde because I don't know where uh, Agros Dunes is. So it's like they had Santa Hats, but then they got all dirty and nasty. Oh man, there's not much Skeleton Horde left in here. Ugh, that is goopy. All right. Such is life. I think I might try and make it to miniature market for the little sale thing tomorrow. So maybe I'll pick up some more of that while I'm over there. They say little sale. They're having a big sale apparently, but yeah. Todd was going to try and make it by there today. I don't know if he did. I told him to grab any wings at war or uh, tripods and triplanes that he might have seen but I don't know okay did I tell you did I show you that Chris I wound up picking up tripods and triplanes no yeah because I have a war of the world's problem um and so of course I'm pretty sure it's out of production now but I wound up picking up a core box and then I got a bunch of the tripods two of the kinds of tripods were on like stupid sale at miniature market they were like five bucks a piece nice i got a few each of those and then the basic box and then i got uh, another couple of biplanes triplanes one of them is a world war one newport the other one's a uh an italian like cr42 or whatever from world war ii but it's essentially a world war one biplane so there's that um i mean let's let's be fair the the uh the fairy swordfish is a basically a World War One biplane. So the fairy swordfish is a marvel of biplane engineering. Um, oh, it is. I love that aircraft. <clears throat> yeah, I have a one thirty fifth scale Tamiya seaplane version of that. Yeah, that I mean, I, those, that those are like build. the the pinnacle of biplane evolution. To be honest with you, um, <clears throat> as opposed to the Italians who just had a ridiculously hard up case of last waritis, just like the frogs. Um, but yeah, no, man, the swordfish is outstanding. What's the uh, what's the biplane carrier fighter the British started the war with? Um, oh, geez, oh, geez, I don't know, but I mean, it kind of makes sense, it's a whole lot easier to repair wood and canvas, you know. <laughs> That it is true. Well, I mean, if we're, we're talking wood and canvas, um, you, you, you can't go wrong with the mosquito. Fair. Fair. Because, again, that's part of the reason why that was designed and built as it was. Um, but also, it was made for hot, nasty speed, baby. Um, oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, that thing was the epitome of hot, nasty speed. At, yeah. Um, also, sweet mother of low altitude high speed bombings man jesus yeah um like yeah isn't that what the um french units what's that did we lose you mcmurray and then we lost mcmurray 
Yeah, it looks like it. I'm sure he'll be back. Okay. Well, there we go. Rats. I can't find the color I'm looking for. Kind of like Easter, he's back. Who's hey, that? you, you, you dropped out for a second. Me? Yeah. Dog, I just was rambling to myself. That's all right. Yeah, you were gone for a good 30 seconds, 45 seconds, maybe. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, you were talking about something and you just like dropped out right in the middle of it. That's ridiculous. So I wouldn't even like, occasionally it does that when I have to swap over and do something else on my phone. But I wasn't. I was just painting turd brown on these guys. Well, maybe you were, uh, maybe you were censored by somebody. Not me. I was in the middle of painting boots. No, I know. I'm just saying. Maybe somebody on the internet was like, We're, we need to censor him. Yeah, he's talking too much about to have with mosquitoes. We can't have that. Exactly. Those assholes over at North of Grumman. No, you know what? It was that It was that Frenchie comment, the frogs. Oh. Somebody took offense to that and, and shut you down. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> Probably can't yeah. handle the truth. Silly frogs. You can't handle the truth. Okay. We're yeah, She's coming out good. I like her. I got a lot of work left on him. I better do some highlights. Yeah. Oh, he's looking good. Yeah. Hi, Donna. Uh, McMurray says hi. Hi. And I'll say hi, even though I don't know Donna. H Hissy says hi also. Hi, Hissy. Tell she her said you, hi back. Even though you're married, she doesn't have to lie to you. She can be honest. What? <laughs> Those look good. I'm just stirring. Oh, hold, hold on. Hold on. So I think I found... Where is it? Where where did it go? Bear with me, boys. Hey, it's your show. I think. I think. No, damn. That's not it. I thought I had found the box of Dang it. her models. Oh, had. Donna's models? Yeah. Those are pretty awesome. I will, I will find them for next Wednesday They're and show you guys what the amazing work she does because it's... Where did my red go? Chris, did you steal my red? No. Did you did you steal my militarum oh. gray or, or basilicum gray? It's quite literally sitting right here. I'm not that smart. No, I did not. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Yeah, I, I couldn't find my... See, I really like the Basilicum Gray for my guns. It's a very good color. So I, I just went with with Templar Black. All right, boys. What you think? Here, let me... Where did I put... Myself here. Where did I put my paint palette? It's a there little blurry. Go. Oh, there you go. Oh, it's looking good. Oh, blurry again. Come on. There we go. Nice. Nice. Dude needs a bath, but other than that, it looks good. Yeah, that's the problem with doing bald heads. Yeah, it you, gets, got uh, of, you got a it, lot of real gets, estate for tea staining. Yeah. No, you know what? It's got, a, it's got, in all seriousness, it's got like a grunge look. Like the guy's been out in the between, yeah. uh, Environment a little too long, which is probably his character anyway. All right. I'm actually on my last dude. So I'm actually doing well. I, I don't normally get this much done in a night. Okay. What color is this dude?
I'm having to go back and retouch up, get the white a little bit brighter on these candy canes because I think that's about the last thing I'm going to do is come back and do because some of these it's the the stripes are sculpted into them. Yeah. Speaking of candy cane stripes sculpted, I'm I'm still very disappointed with uh, Ward C shifts. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. If GHQ can do it in one twenty four hundred scale, yeah, you sons of bitches can do it in one eighteen hundred. Yeah. Right. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. There must be a reason. Lazy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was implying. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say poor sculpting, laziness. What would, would take your pick? Well. I don't remember what this particular character looks like. Damn it. Okay, it doesn't help when you highlight the character in all friggin' red. Dipshits. Okay, here we go. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. He's very pale. Hmm. Who is it? Nobody's home. I thought somebody was knocking. Housekeeping. You want fluffy pillow? <laughs> What a great movie. Fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy in a little coat. Oh. Well, if anybody has been following what's been happening with USS Texas, uh, as as most of us know, she is in dry dock currently. And we have been informed that thankfully she will not be going to either Beaumont or Baytown. Oh, sweet. Baytown sucks. Oh, dude, you have no idea. You're right. I don't. You okay? Yep. Um, it's, uh, I'm not going to say that it's as bad as Kenlock. But oh, Baytown's kind of a shithole. Oh, dude, it is horrible. Well, there you go. Good stuff. And Beaumont is just... It is a... Oh, no way. Think think of Beaumont to to be very much like a um, well, it's it's a very industrial location. And doesn't do a whole lot in the way of tourism. And what they were wanting to do is use Texas at USS Texas as a draw for tourism. And the problem with that is USS Texas in and of itself is not going to draw tourists because if it did, they would have taken it back to where it had originally been hanging out. 
first. Oh man, this is gonna suck. I don't wanna candy stripe these things. <sighs> yeah, but I just said I was gonna do it. So here we are. Time to stripe some candy canes, boys. Nice. This is gonna suck. <laughs> Try on this goofy gomer first. All right, come on. Oh. So he needs to be wearing an orange jumper because he was in prison. At least his shirt is orange. I don't know. I don't think the rest of his... No. No, just his shirt is orange. Okay. His pants are probably going to be dungarees. Purple. What? Purple? No. Why not? His, his skin is purple. Oh. See? Well, that would just clash. That's fair. What, orange and purple? I think orange and purple kind of go together. No, but I mean, if it was on his pants and his skin, that would just be silly. Right. So there, there he is so far. Okay. That's for another day. What, uh, so how far you gotten? Me? Yeah. Um, pretty far. I got this. Like, yeah, this is pretty straightforward kit. I've got a few little bits to put on. I'll finish it tonight. It's more a question of. Um, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna say those super duper didn't take me long to complete. That was the kind of nice thing. So I yeah. could knock out a couple of them in a night if I was trying to be industrious about it. Yes. Next uh, next week, it's I'm gonna have my uh, my subs that I ordered, my one seven hundred scale subs. Uh huh. So I'll have those to build next week. Because next next week will be a model build week. Yep. Because we won't have McMurray with us. Yeah, sorry guys. Oh no, it's understandable, man. You're gonna have you got... three solid Saturdays with McMurray towards the end of the month, though. Yeah, you are. Because we're gonna have a show, then we're gonna have March to Victory, then we'll have a show again. Yep. And I'm gonna be there Saturday in March to Victory. So the Grand uh, Spanish Armada Two Coal Fired Boogaloo will be happening on Saturday night at March to Victory. Nice, outstanding. For are you going to be doing anything uh, during the day, or are you just going to be uh, hanging? I out don't and know, playing? man. I don't know, man. I I really don't. I don't know if, uh, if 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 we get closer to the day and it looks like Wiley might need somebody to put on a game Saturday. Absolutely. Slash, what might hap wind up happening is if it looks like. Uh, Jay and Steve's games are going to be big games on Saturday. I might put on a game so that if there's surplus players, they're not necessarily just automatically getting funneled into Jay and Steve's games and tuckering them out because those guys run games right. every session. Um, right. Which can get pretty pretty tiring, needless to say. I did that. Oh, yeah. I did that last year, and then I ran games at the break, too, which was stupid, but you know, it was also my choice. So, um, yeah, I ran a game every session last year and then ran Eat Hitler during the break, which was fun. And I had a blast doing. But Jesus, man. When I say I was dog tired, I mean I was the dog they put to sleep tired. Um, right. By the end of Saturday night, man, I was toast. But that's okay. 
Meandry and Mike wanted to know if they still make those uh, color rubs like eyeshadow for miniatures. And yes, they do. I have not used them in the past. I've yeah, Chris uses that. traditional eyeshadow. Yeah, it uh, it, it uh, brings out it brings out the green in my hazel eyes. Yeah, what he said. My eyes are bluer than the water in my toilet, baby. Start calling you tidy bowl. Do it. No balls if you don't. Yeah, so saying I was going to candy stripe these candy canes was really stupid because this sucks. But I guess it's kind of needed, though, isn't it? What else would you do? I don't know. Leave them white. I don't, that would look terrible. But I now realize why I looked at these things and said, no, nah, no, nah, maybe not today. Hey, Ningoy, go ahead, man. Take care. Go watch the movie. Have fun. You know, thanks for being here. Yeah, make it happen, bud. You Netflix and chill with somebody? Because last I checked, we're about as smooth as Netflix and chill, man. Um, but no. We're, we're smooth yeah. as a uh, long desert highway. How's that go? Something like that. A lot of sand. Yeah. This is gonna be, uh, we're going to be going to be here for another four hours? Because I, I was digging that the last couple. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll be able to make it that long or not. I'm just messing, boss. It's going to be what it's going to be. Yep. Okay, got it, got it. Looks like he's wearing acid wash jeans. Your guy? Yeah. Dog, all the rage, dude. One of my favorite pair of pants in high school were uh, uh, a gr medium gray acid wash uh, um, chino. Dog, that must have been terrifying because you people barely knew what electricity was when you were in high school, much less acid. They ain't got him. Uh huh. Let's hear you, whippersnapper. It's fine. Keep in mind, I'm not old like uh, Jeff and Hissy Cat are. That is true. Oh, gross. I felt I am what I am, my friend. I am what I, I, I am. I had three bottles done, and then I realized that the three bottles I did only had one candy cane each, and the three I have left to do each have two candy canes. So you're a third of the way done, not half of the way done. Yeah, exactly. Abject silliness, I tell you. Still progress. Still progress. That it is, my man. That it is. Okay. Where? God, I hate when this happens. I was. I literally just had it. There it is. Char Charles is wanting us to uh, veer off into food land. <laughs> we were just in food land, Charles. Charles Charles says, food, Danish, go. Oh, God. No, that's too close to jelly donuts, Charles. We can't do that. You were there the first time that happened. <laughs> Good Lord. That was ugly. That, that, that almost got us canceled. That was ugly. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You all right, boss? That was a good uh, day. That was one of the few was a good, day. good good times we had on that old show. One of the few times we had a really good one was, was Jelly Donuts, man, for oh, whatever geez, reason. Jelly Donut. Jesus Christ. That was a hotly debated topic because these mongoloids don't know how to do it, apparently. I, I didn't realize I was, right was, there. I was right there with you. That's true. That's true. But I didn't realize that was just like common knowledge. Right. But apparently it's a lost art or a dying art. 
What, to make a jelly donut? No, no to eat a jelly donut. These idiots did like, idiot thought you had to cut into a jelly. Like, you're going to lose all the jelly if you cut, try and right. cut into a jelly donut. What type of donuts do you cut into, period? Yeah, you don't. That's the point. That's it's, the point. Exactly. It's, it's abject lunacy. Now, I get it if you're on a budget and you want one half for one day and another, but that's, you know, an extreme example. Well, not only that, but you can't really deal with a jelly donut. Because, again, if you try and cut it, you got to, like, plug the hole somehow. Or else it's all going to, you're going to lose all your jelly. Yeah. Not only that, but if you're on a budget, you're not really buying a jelly donut anyhow. You're not. I was just trying to find something. Yeah, I was no, reaching. you're good. I was reaching, boss. You are. You're good. You're good. You're good. I don't all know. Right. That was a pretty far reach. I mean. Huh. It's all right. Shit. I'm going to call him done. Stick a fork in him. Just don't cut him in half. Yeah. Yeah. All the jelly will f flow out. All his all jelly, all his uh, alien jelly. Every last bit of his jelly. All right, guys. Let me, let me big in myself here. What do y'all think? Hang on. Oh, nice. Yep. Nice. I'm a fan. Okay. It's a little dry, but yeah, it looks like it's going to work fine. Now we're half. I have five. Candy canes painted, five unpainted. All right. It is truly a Christmas miracle because I hate this. Well, I am I am surprised with myself. This is the first week you finished before me. Well, I only had four dudes. That's true. And I don't have any fucking candy canes. That's true. I was about to say that's a good point. If it wasn't for the candy canes, this would have been done a minute ago, but that's okay. So, but uh, yeah, that's it's okay. Katie can build character. I still got I still got a basin, but shit, basing takes hardly no time at all. That's a nice thing with these being winter. I'm gonna pry, I'm gonna put white Steinol res on it. Yeah, it with some of that snow paste. Boom! Bob's your uncle. Yeah, done, Serino, bud. So I'll get uh, once I get them. Once I get the bases done on them i'll uh i'll get some uh, good photos and throw them up on the throw throw them up onto the well i'll do some youtube shorts with them and i'll do and i'll throw up some uh, finished photos on uh, both the uh not j discord and the not j uh facebook facebook thing so yeah good stuff We're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Okay. Four candy canes. Charles says, I do believe my paint skills have gotten worse. Nah, I've seen some of the stuff you're doing, Charles. They look good, buddy. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's all a balance, man. Uh, Mandarin Mike says, food talk. Now I'm uh, craving a chocolate eclair. Dude, a chocolate eclair... I tell you, I tell you what's okay. Outside of an apple fritter, yeah, because okay. apple fritter is by far the best donut batter based pastry you can have. Yeah, just period. Yep, I agree. Um, a a chocolate eclair is is almost as good as a Bavarian cream Bismarck. I'd take the chocolate a eclair. Bavarian yeah. cream Bismarck. Yeah. Is that something? Is that? Is it's that a jelly donut with that sounds a little cream. pornographic. It no, does. No, no, no. It's, it's it's a. Uh... It's where the dudes wore a monocle. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I knew what was uh, something. Yeah, here it is. This is. And all of a sudden, this is the show that gets us canceled. Um, but yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, it's like a jelly donut, but with a different weird cream in it. I don't know. They're not my favorite. Mm -hmm. Just like custard-filled donuts aren't my favorite, but that's okay. Oh. Well, I don't mind a custard-filled. Well, takes all kinds, cream, man. Bavarian cream is not too far off of custard. Okay. 
takes all Dude, kinds. I, I like I like a good custard, and not just donuts, just custard in general. Oh, I mean, Andrew Mike says Boston cream is wonderful. Uh, Tim B. Boston cream uh, probably uh, don't get there. No, we we got Boston Boston cream and Bavarian cream are are very similar. I was about so, to say that might just be a slight regional difference in what we call it. To be real, real serious with you. Yeah. Well, Bavari- for me, Bavarian cream, it, because of all of the, uh, you know, it's what we call it down in, in Texas because of all the Germans. Well, now uh, you live in, in St. Louis, in, in, so it's in, even fucking Texas. worse. Oh, yeah. It's, Texas and St. Louis has got, got severe amounts of Germans. Yeah, that's all right. They gotta go somewhere. Yeah. Hey man, I'm happy they came to St. Louis. I quit drinking, but Budweiser oh, being yeah. in town was pretty sweet. Yeah, that, that's why you got. Uh, uh, well, that's why you got uh, um, the uh, shit. The the beer. Uh, Shinerbach. Uh, oh yeah. The brewery for Shinerbach out of Shiner, Texas, and yeah. you've got. New Braunfels and Bernie spelled B O E N E. Um, you know, <clears throat> good old fashioned German names. Fredericksburg. Yeah, dude. You know. so if you y'all ever... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, speaking of good old fashioned German names, I heard a. Uh... A good, I think it's the, whatever the, damn, I, don't, I can't remember the name of the band now, but it's a. Uh like a civil war reenacting band kind of thing. But yeah, they were singing uh fights with Siegel. That was a pretty, pretty outstanding one. That's a good St. Louis boy right there. Good old Franzi. There you go. Raising union regiments and whatnot. Doing the, doing the good stuff. So did I tell y'all that, um, a while back, several, several years ago, we found out that, one of our ancestors was a army surgeon for the 54th colored infantry out of Arkansas. Yes, you did tell us that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool to find out. Absolutely. And then then we had another uh, another, uh, ancestor that was a, a medic of some nature in another, uh, at another location. So yeah, pretty cool to find out. It is absolutely. E- even though you know, even though Jay and I grew up in Texas, um, our our family fought on the right side because they weren't from Texas. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, we. Uh, I was going to say, if you go to uh, if you go to St. Peter and Paul Cemetery in South St. Louis City, you can find a uh, a Gustavus Biedenstein died in eighteen sixty three. Oh, there you go. That's a good German name right there, Gustavus. Yeah, big time. His dad's name was George. His dad's name was Georg, but it it got changed a little bit in the uh, the shuffle shuffle. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yep. yep. Go if we're going to talk seal. savory instead of dessert, I could go for a Braunschweiger and peanut butter sandwich. That is absolutely disgusting. What? You don't like spreadable meats? Not with peanut butter. I mean, peanut butter is pretty awesome with anything, to be honest with you. But... Well, well, no, thank you. I'd I, do I, it. Like, I like my peanut butter to be... Um, only sullied by uh, jam. Yeah, I'm not I, sure I'd want peanut butter with a uh, spreadable meat. I have a hard time with just spreadable meat, but all, all by itself, much less putting anything else on it. Right. Um, that's just me. I like my meat to have some substance to it, not to be liquefied. Oh, you guys are missing so out. So if, if you want, if you want, Mandarin Mike, if you want an amazing synergy between fats and proteins, 
than peanut butter and bacon. Very good. Honestly, dude. Two I've great some, things that go great together right there, son. I've had some good experience, and it sounds weird. So I'll be the first one to admit it sounds weird, but like a cheap hamburger that you grill so it's not dry on the outside, but it's got a, a brown to it. Dog, you get that thing like on the second day, and you put it on in between a couple pieces of bread. You put that in between a peanut butter and jelly sandwich it's pretty pretty stellar huh. yeah i'll be the first one to admit it's weird man <laughs> it right. sounds weird don't get me wrong it's weird man uh and it's certainly not a venture for the faint of heart because it looks gross it tastes great though well that's all that matters it looks disgusting <clears throat> now what i what i really dig is a uh, whole wheat toast with uh, peanut butter and bananas. Yeah, that right there. Peanut butter banana guy. Oh man. Yeah. People swear by it though. It's good. It's good. People swear by it. Uh, Tim says one of uh, ours was a cavalry officer during the 30 years war for Sweden, the Europeans hated the Swedish cavalry. Apparently they were violent. <laughs> well, that's part of being in a war, right? Well, yeah. I mean, by definition, um, you're going to be dealing with, with uh, violence when it comes to war. Just by its very nature. Did I get this right or not? This is hard to tell. I don't think I did. Never get stuck on a field trip with the kid next to you had when he has peanut butter and pickles. Uh, okay, oh, that dude, just sounds wrong. Pregnant lady food right there. That, yeah, that is pregnant lady food right there. That that is that is a no go at this station. Thanks for playing. Circle does not get the square. Oh, okay. Oh, man, that's why my paint sounded so, or my why my water sounded so weird. Why is that? There's not much left in there. No, oh, well, there you go. I have this nasty habit where occasionally I'll use paint water and just kind of keep refilling the, the cup as it dissolves or as it right. evaporates until I just have this, like, Real nasty water in there. I'm not a good. I'm not a good person. I'll be the first one to admit it. All right. Now we're gonna base, or we're gonna prime the bases with this white stable resin. There you go. Hmm. This is a concerning. So, well, I don't seem to know where the directions for my USS Texas went. I give you directions to USS Texas. Oh, damn it. It's out of reach. I was about to say it's right here, but it's sitting over there out of reach. And the other USS Texas is sitting over there out of reach. And then there's another one, but it's also over there out of reach. I have a BB-1 over there, a BB-1 over there, and then a BB-35 over there. Actually, I think there's two BB-35s over there because I have one that's all labeled up for uh, War at Sea, and then I have one that's done normally in 1-6,000. Actually, then I have a badger with a quill 1-6,000 also. So there's three 1-6,000 USS Texas sitting over there. Oh, man. <clears throat> so I turned my camera off to go do something, and I came back, and I've been building, and I forgot to turn it back on. Oh, well. Oops. That's okay. Oh, it's all good, man. We believe you were building. Yeah. So much for a potential video. It happens. Just 
just like put in one of those little like uh, intermission screens <laughs> and say like, and then there was a, a bear attack or something and then come back to it. Yeah. Two hours later. I will say yeah. that the shooting of model building is different than gameplay, you know, board games and such. So I still have to learn how to do that so that I'm making enjoyable content. Right. Enjoyable content. Have you seen this crap we put out? Not right. you. But yeah, no, it's enjoyable. Hissy Cat Studios puts out good stuff. <laughs> Chris and I ramble about I'm stuff. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's still not quite to the level it needs to be at, I think. But thanks, though. Oh, oh found it. Hot niggity daffodils. Do you have one seven hundred Texas, Chris? Yeah, uh, E four Airman sent it to me. Oh, that's right, that's right, because Walt's the man. Yeah, Walt is the man. With with the painting guide, no less. Oh, oh baby, man. that's good because you've never seen what it actually looks like. Shit, I've walked the decks, brother. You said decks. Yeah. No. Okay. Just make He's sure. I heard it. That. Make sure I heard that correctly. It what sounded like said? deck, but that's not what he meant to say. Yeah. He started a little bit. Oh, right. You know, whatever gets you off, man. If you gotta take it for a walk, take it for a walk. Who am I? Prior to uh, your parade. So prior to. Um, moving her to uh, Tri Dock, they used to have a gaming convention on the Texas. That's cool. In my That's opinion. how Chris cured his ED. Yeah. Unfortunately, I never got to go. I'm just kidding, buddy. Yeah, that's why I'm still suffering. Oh, Jesus Christ. There you go. Good. Go. Good. That's fair. <clears throat> so there are a shit ton of steps for this model. There are 21 steps for this model. That's okay. Most of the time on models, you've got, it's like a Lego, right? So you might have a step that's only two or three pieces you're putting on. Oh, oh no, no. These are all... So, the one thing that I've noticed is there are three sprues exactly the same. Yeah. Um, three sprues? Two sprues. Well... Actually, five sprues, exactly the same. Two bags, five sprues, all exactly the same. Because a single sprue is basically what you have a turret? for each turret. Yeah. But it's this, I mean, it's it's not just the turret, but it's all the damn 20 millimeter ortolans and yeah. shit like that. It's 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 crazy. I was about to say they had twenty mils on the roofs of the turrets, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Hell, by the end yeah. of the war, they probably had forty millimeters up there. Oh, they they had uh, not on top of the turrets. Um, I don't think okay. they had forties on top of the turrets. Um, okay. Probably not, but it's always fun to exaggerate because the U.S. kind of just joined the club of put a gun everywhere. Yeah. No. Um. It was she had. Uh, she had a couple of 40s, a couple of 40 tubs, but uh, most of her anti-aircraft was 20s. Um, looks like on turret B and turret uh, Y, they uh, had six 20s uh, on top of each. <laughs> exactly. Magnificent. Because why not? They can't, they can't put it on A and Z, though, because then you'd have the guns of Y and B just spinning and knocking them the hell off. Like, yeah, hey, right? Let's, yeah. let's clear the turrets. I, they, they wanted to, but... Yeah. 
just wasn't feasible. <clears throat> that or you've got, you know, a bow and a stern firing, and all of a sudden just everybody gets blown off the turret, but, you know. Right. Whatever. Either or. So, let's see here. She ended up at the end of the war. Oh, I'm sure it's an um, absurd number. Because I'm sure those three-inch nests that were on top of the boat cranes either got pulled down or oh, replaced yeah, those, by the 40s. those were gone. Um, yeah, those were gone. Um, that's because once you get into something that actually requires a serious amount of ammo, like how, that's, not, that's not a a workable position. Not that it was right. an entirely workable position with the three inch gun, but even so. So of course she had the 10 14s for her main battery. No. Um, she had eight of her 18 five inch guns left. Uh, okay. For the small boats, but they also added another 10 or, um, And they had, had six of the 18 or six of the 16 five inch 51s. Yeah. But then they also added 10 three inch 50s um, along okay. with the, the, the second upper deck. Yeah. Uh, and then 10 quad 40 millimeter tubs. So 40 40 millimeter guns in, oh, in, okay. They're in the quads. Piece. In quads. And 44 20 millimeter guns. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say, I'm kind of surprised they didn't have any single or double 40s, but yeah. So. A lot of guns. A lot of guns. A lot of guns. And then God knows how many 50s just bolted to every railing. Oh, shit, dude. It's. You probably couldn't swing a dead cat without hitting a 50 on there. Well, I mean, that's the point, right? Because, like, everything. Basically, everything once you pass forty millimeter is is a is good for an AA screen, right? Forty right. and twenty, especially once you get into later war stuff and you get you know good solid aircraft, those are really only super duper useful. They're not going to bring down an aircraft, but if you pump enough of them into somebody, either A oh, yeah. that kamikaze might veer off, or B you know you might be able to hit something that's important or something like that. But it's not going to be a, a you know an instant party or an instant down of a plane like you'd get if you hit them with a four inch or a five inch right. gun or maybe even a three um depending on the size of what you're hitting at but yeah so i mean you don't that's the nice thing though is that those don't necessarily need fire directors nearly as as much as your your traditionally loaded ordnance anti-aircraft will which is kind of cool yep so in comparison to the Texas with its anti-aircraft gun complement. The USS Missouri was not that much, did not have that much more on it. Oh yeah, no, 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 not at all. Um, of course she had, she had the uh, 10 twin mount uh, five inch dual purpose guns. Um, but she only had 10 quadruple 40s and uh, 49 single twins. So, but the only, you know, there was the nine 16 inch guns. Well, yeah, that tends to help. Right. Not that right. they had, not that they were rocking the beehive, like, you know, Yamato and stuff was, which is just absurd. Yeah. That is just NVTS nuts. Yeah. It's, it's, that's a little excessive, but Hey, um, I mean, if they can train, you know, you know, at that point in time, you're not even necessarily training quick enough. Yeah, because you're quite literally just throwing out what's essentially like the size of a basketball court winging at you that's full of steel. Yeah, it's you know um, you're you're covering enough area to cover at least a Betty. I mean, yeah. The the the, the point is that you're you're it 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 works on the the same principle as like a hedgehog, right? Right. Yeah. It's not that. Um, you know, a hedgehog's not going to do as much to a submarine as a depth charge. Full-on depth charge. But, but 
a you're gonna get to, you're gonna just like you know it, it's not gonna do as much as exploding flak right next to it again like a five inch gun might do but you're far more likely to hit and each one of those hits is a direct impact yeah um, as opposed to maybe some shrapnel or something like that but I don't know now, the, go for it in 1986 the USS Missouri had a slightly different armament package yeah that's for sure um, they only had 12 5 inch guns yeah um, but they also what, had wait, there's more they they had uh, 8 quadruple they, they, they traded out the quadruple 40 millimeter gun tubs for uh, the quadruple Tomahawk cruise missile launchers. Yeah. Eight of those. They also had four quadruple harpoon launchers. Yeah. We're just going to switch to anti-ship missiles, guys. It's all oh, good. And they, and, and they still had 20 millimeter guns. Yeah. That's because you still had the, the danger but they were, of fast but they were failings. And else. But they were What's failings. So. Yeah. They're it's, a six bar- it's a six barrel gun in each R2-D2. Yeah. Again, which is perfect for A, anti-harpoon stuff, and also, can you imagine one of those open opening up on a, on a fast boat, like on a speedboat? Oh, dude. Like, it's designed to just use physics to take apart a missile. <laughs> or, right. You know, a guided rocket, much less <laughs> yeah, here's how yeah, Somali it's, pirate buddies. It's, it's oh, designed man. to take out a a a you know a twenty foot long two steel foot tube traveling wide. Rock Jesus. Yeah, compared to a twenty eight foot piece of fiberglass <laughs> with lots of gasoline, <laughs> it's not going to end well. It's just. Oh man! So I've lost one gun turret off this kit. Well, that's no point now. No, it was the problem is it's in a, a, a an obvious location, and it it had fallen off the sprue, and I had kept it in the plastic bag. But at some point, that bag got tossed, and apparently, I tossed that bit well, along with it. To, it sounded like it's uh, time to go uh, diving. No, no, no! I threw that away months ago. I was about to say, there's, there okay. might be an extra in there. If not, there are certainly extras in every other kit you've got. Slash, I bet you that gun turret or that tub is a photo etch piece. So yeah, no, I, I'm pretty sure that. that it is. Yeah. So I'm not going to stress over it um, because I could just I, – I'm pretty sure I can go cut that out and everything will be okay. The other things, I am going to look to see if maybe I put that plastic bag in here. Oh, no. One of the cool things they did in this the latest model the, the kit that I have is they actually will solve my problem. They gave me a couple of these bonus sprues that have guns and aircraft and boats, right? So mm-hmm. there's three sprues like this now that's in the kit that was not in the, the original kit that I have. So I can go snip one of these guns. Yeah. And I'm good. In fact, I've got a, another one of those exact same sprue and these aren't part of the normal kit. These are just like, Hey, we're going to throw these in for you to customize and, and do whatever. Yeah. Cause like, a, I don't need the aircraft. There's a bunch of those things. They're awesome. One of those little guns right there is all that fixes my problem. Giggity. Yep. Man, I thought I had a snow powder, but all I have is this gray sand. I think that's snowy enough. I see. Hold on. It's pretty white, but it's not. <clears throat> so you lay no. that down. You lay that down, and then you uh, do a heavy dry brush of white. You're good. That makes sense. Slash, they're bad guys. Maybe their snow's a little, a little poopy. Yeah. I mean, th- their, their, their snow is going to be like New York snow. Yeah. I should just do it and then go back in with yellow so it looks like yellow snow. Yeah. And just hit it and be like, yeah, they got extra reindeer around where these boys live. Okay. 
No. As I always used to say, don't you don't you don't eat the yellow snow by the telephone pole. It's where it's the it's where it tastes best, Chris. That's the sweetest yellow snow. And, and leave the brown just outside of town. Isn't that where you ate? Isn't that the yellow snow you made Jay eat? You told him the telephone pole snow is the best snow. Yeah. So you, the you, you kind viewers might not know this, but Chris has a darling younger brother who he habitually abused. No, I didn't. Um, until Jay got into the army and learned how to beat Chris up. Um, well, to be fair, he did beat me up when I was about five and well, about six, and he was about two. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that started early. Um, also, not surprising though. Jay's a Jay's a ferocious co- sort of character. No, uh, he's not. He, he's a great guy. I am aware of that. <sighs> Here I am. However, talk however, Jay up, and Chris is coming in here like the older brother Buzz Killington over here. No, he's a teddy how, bear. How, how, no, hell with that. Um, no, to to be honest, I th- I thought I, I've told y'all this story before. I know Hissy hasn't heard this story, so I'll tell it anyway. There we go. <laughs> So, I'm about six years old. Jay's about two. He's, what happened was, he, he's out on the front porch, playing with the old, well, what is now old, but uh, back in the day, the uh, Fisher Price Garage. Okay. Did he beat you up with a wrench? No, 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 no. It's better than this. So he's playing, pushing the cars around. You know, it's got the little crank up elevator that the car goes up and when it gets to the top, it tips out and it comes down the the exit ramp. All good fun, right? So he's he's happy as a clam, just not bothering anybody playing with the toy all by himself. Me, I see this. This this cannot happen. This 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 will not do. This will decide, not stand. This will not stand. I decide I want to play with that toy and I push him out of the way being, you know, the bigger brother push. He doesn't make a sound. He doesn't cry. He doesn't whimper. Nothing. He simply walks back into the house, goes to where we keep the, um, back in the day, Coca-Cola used to come in one liter glass bottles. So he grabbed one of the empties that we oh, still had to take it's... back to the store. It still might have had Colombian marching powder in it, wasn't it? Probably so. Okay. Comes out. Luckily, it was one of the empties because he cracks me on the back of the skull with that thing. Nice. I let out this blood-curdling screech and start bawling my eyes out. And then Jay went he back to simply... with this. He Hard. simply sits back down, puts the Coke bottle next to him, and continues to play. I go wailing into Mom, who is talking to my Aunt Mary on the phone. My Aunt Mary says, good God, Beth, what is that? What is going on? He says, oh, Jay just uh, cracked Jimmy over the back of the head with a Coke bottle. That's all. <laughs> just just nice. nonchalantly. Nice. Yeah, by the way, I'm Jimmy. My, before I before the eighth grade, um, I went by Jimmy with at uh, that's what my parents and all of my family called me prior to that. I usually call my friends name Chris Jimmy. That makes sense. Well, my name is Christopher James. Well, fine, make it make sense. So, that's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Force it to make sense. But yeah. Jeez. But just. My mom would say, just nonchalant, oh, that Jay just you know, hit Jimmy with the, in the back of the head with a Coke bottle. Yeah, like well, it was an everyday occurrence. What's that? What else are you going to do? Maybe yeah. your mom just knew you deserved it. She did. She, she did. She did. She, she, she had no sympathies for me whatsoever. She and to sure this day, Jay is still the sure innocent younger brother bleeding? that's never done anything wrong. What's that? I said, and to this day, Jay is still the innocent baby brother who's never done anything wrong. 
Oh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll go with that. It's like the time you wrecked my car. Well, were you supposed to be playing with it? <clears throat> uh, no, literally. He, he borrowed my car and wrapped it around a telephone pole. That's where you told him to park it. He was just looking for that yellow snow you're always talking about. Right? Um, yes, Tim, I know that could actually kill me. Uh, that's, that's, it ex actually ex explains a lot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Everybody says, were you dropped as a kid, on your head as a kid? No, my brother brained me in the back of the head with a Coke bottle. Yeah. A glass Coke bottle, nonetheless. <clears throat> See, Tim? Yeah, your, your brother wrecked your car. So the story he gave at the time is that a deer ran out in front of him and he swerved to miss it and lost control. And uh, Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Hit That's the, totally hit, believable, too. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. No, what had happened was he took the corner too fast and lost control. No, yes, the corner the wasn't engineered correctly for his speed. It wasn't his fault. It was the, the the civil engineer did not make that turn appropriately. Yeah. Now, little did he know that it was it was supposed to be a, a road course for a, for a Grand Prix. Sounds like you should have told him that. So it's really just kind of your fault. Yeah. So. Again, I'm, I am going to fight for Jay's innocence at every point here. Mm. I don't know why. That's just what we're doing today, I guess. Yeah, but it gets better. It's because he runs a hell of a Kriegspiel. He does. He does. Um, um, <clears throat> so I get the car fixed. Um, I get the the rocker panel pulled out, and I, get a, I replace the door, and it's in decent condition. It's drivable. And I have it parked on my property alongside my single wide um, driveway on my property, but it's in the grass. Did you get a well, ticket for it? I apparently, I didn't get a ticket. I got a warning and said that you cannot park your car on your property in the grass. There you go. Now, the boat that was sitting next to the house apparently could park there. Well, yeah. With no problems. Where else do boats go? <laughs> and, and it wasn't that the car was not moving. I was driving it every day. You know, I could understand if I had it up on blocks or something. But no, it was getting driven every day. I just couldn't park it there. No, see, if you had it up on blocks, you just need to put a couple paddles in it, and then it's the same as a boat, and you're fine. Exactly, apparently. Anyway. Oh, no, no, no. The boat had to be pushed into the backyard. Oh, we well, should have put the car in the backyard. Chris. I, what was I thinking, right? Oh, Anyway. Oh. But it was okay to park on the side of the street in front of my house on the grass. Oh, problem solved. So I did. A and week later, hit. a week later, a city-owned flatbed truck, two-ton flatbed truck, backs into the car and caves in the uh, driver's side A-pillar. Nice. Shatters the windshield, breaks the side glass. The adjuster comes out and says, well... We'll pay tw we will pay $2,250 for repair, or we'll total it for $1,850. I had paid $1,500 for the car <laughs> six years earlier. I said, write me a check. Yeah, solid. So, yeah. It... it I got I got back at the city by making them pay for the the idiocy. Of hey man, them not letting me park. And so after that, um, I, I 
I never heard anything when I started parking the my new car and on in the grass. I we we somehow didn't get any comments. Oh, that guy retired. It could have just been a bad day for the cop. That does, was that a cop or was that somebody from the city coming and telling you you couldn't do that? We got a letter. Yeah. Oh, you probably had a neighbor complain. That is exactly what happened. You 110% had a neighbor that was a dick. Yeah, because the city isn't going to come around your property looking for trouble. They got donuts to eat. Yeah, no. no, no, no. So this podunk little pissant town in the you middle of Kansas City. Lee Summit? No, no, no. Raytown. Oh, Raytown. Yeah, fuck Raytown. Yeah, they got nothing better to do. I was about to say, I live right behind City Hall from my little municipality. It's a pain in the butt because that dude will like see stuff on his way out to his car or something, I guess. And Yep. I got complained at one time because I had share a fence with city owned property and there's a bunch of weeds that grow up on the city's side that then grow up on my fence. Right. Cause they don't maintain it at all. Like it's right. just a empty lot that, you know, the grass grows up to the knees in the summer and all that. Mm-hmm. Right. And so I was over there cutting it one day in the afternoon and this guy walks out, he's like, Hey, you need to stop cutting on city property. I'm like, yeah, dude, what you, you're the guy who's municipal code enforcement. Like you're the guy who's going to come write me a code infraction. If I don't, if I have, you know, stuff growing too high on my fence and it's out of control, it's like, well, you, you can't be cutting on city property. Okay. So I just hose, hose the entire fence with herbicide and it hasn't been a problem since because nothing grows on three feet of their side of the fence. There you go. So yeah, the city the city prefers uh, you know a little bit of chemical warfare instead. Well, they don't know about it. I also then just started doing all my yard work on Saturdays when they're not in the office. But yeah, that's not that's not the point. There you go. But yeah, that's when you do all your 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 stuff that'll get you municipal infractions is on the weekends. Okay, I just got to put some boats on here, and I am done. Dog, boats are the best. Oh. Boats are the best. What have I learned? Um, I still need to practice don't, gluing. Don't throw away uh, plastic bags. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I learned that. I'll probably still throw something away. And lose I was about it. to say, did we really learn that, though? Because I know I haven't. What's funny is I made a point of not losing that. Oh, yeah. And every time, man. Oh, my cat. Every time, man. Soak something up. So, for those of y'all uh, wanting to know more about the ship that uh, Hissy is building, uh, it was built between 1922 and 1923. Yeah. Named after the Ubari River. She was commissioned in July of 23. Uh, she was torpedoed and, torpedoed and sunk by the USS Bluegill in April of 44. Yeah. In fact, what I'm going to do with the uh, tryhard model is I'm going to put a diorama with her in the water trying to avoid some fish that are about to strike. So it's going to have a little that the moment that she's hit. Nice. nice. So I'm going to have her kind of, you know, doing a little evasive move, do the waves, and they're going to be about two or three fish right about to hit her. It's also hilarious that you're calling it the try hard model. I love it. <laughs> well, some stuff I don't try hard. I just, I'm, you it's know. Fair. And other stuff, I'm going to try hard. I'm going to do my best. Whatever that is. Tim B says, the wife works for a company that does the food in the school. The janitor forgot to put a wet floor sign up, and she shattered her knee. Ooh. Lawsuit. That's not good. So I will tell you, in work comp, which is what industry I'm in, 
One of the number one causes of injury is slip and fall. Yep. Or trip and fall as well. But yeah, that's not an uncommon injury type. So when I said the Ubaria is just basically a, a big destroyer, I wasn't too far from the truth. Yeah, no, it, it, uh, it absolutely. Uh, she comes in, her full load, um, was her full load was 4,075 tons. The Fabuki, it was half the size at 2,050. In, in all fairness, the Fabukis were huge destroyers. Yeah, they were. Um, um, like she certainly has light cruiser displacement, but right. here's the question: is is she a treaty? Is she a treaty cruiser? Is she or is she one of the amended during construction cruisers? Um, when was she built? Twenty three, but the first Washington Naval th Treaty was twenty two. Okay, yeah. pretty, pretty probably was then. Right? Um, I want to say that's because the Sendai's were made after that, I believe. Yeah. So she was, uh, she she was a one-off, uh, and she was she was a b test bit of various new designs. Um, let's see. Yeah, the, the big thing with her was she actually had a fair amount of armor for a cruiser. She had an inch and a half of belt armor. And, uh, and it, one inch and a tenth of armor on the deck and around the bridge. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to start calling my little excess. It's just belt armor. Nice. About three inches of belt armor. There you go. Yeah, dude. It's Harvey Nickel Steel. <laughs> Keep working out and it'll be crop. There you go. We're going to call it belt armor. That's my phrase of the day. She was pretty quick, too. She could do 35 and a half knots. Yeah, the Japanese were big on having fast cruisers, to be honest with you. Like, what's like, really wild is I'm trying to think of what cruiser class Jackie Fisher pushed through pre World War One. It was a Royal Navy four stack light cruiser that could hit 34 knots, which is just blinding at that point in time. Oh, yeah. Um, like 34 knots is fast as shit for World War Two. Um, World War One, it was insane. Yeah. Like pre World War One, that's that's nuts. Dreadnought battleships were lucky if they, you know, were, were breaking that 20 mark. That's incredible. D t Texas could do 21 on a good day with a with a tailwind. Yeah, with a full tailwind, yeah, and prevailing tides, yeah. But no, I mean, that what was that? I was just reading that shit. Um, I don't know, maybe Estrella. I don't think it is Estrella, though. Um, who knows? But Jackie Fisher liked the uh, pushing the speed envelope part of the guys, you know, pushing for turbine engines and stuff so that they could get going developing fleshing out the Lursa effect, figuring out, again, all that hot, nasty speed we were talking about earlier. Yeah, it's not going to be the Astrea because... It's not. Um, she was built in 1893. Yeah, no, I, it, it's not. I'm, I was looking at, again, in ordering all those ships in 12400, I also ordered some period Royal Navy ships. Um, but most of the ones on Tumbling Dice's site are World War One era. So I had to, I wound up just flicking through Wikipedia pages on more more light cruiser classes than I care to try and remember. Right. Um, okay. But yeah, it, it was fun. I had a good time doing it, ordering it. And it's going to be fun to paint them, even though, you know, those, you know, 20, 25, one twenty four hundred ships are going to take me a few hours to paint, but that's all right. They're fun. Yeah. You can paint them up. Again, that that's one of those endorphins projects, you know. Uh, yeah. 
Did she? <clears throat> excuse me. Did she happen to have been in World War II? Or, or is she one what? of the ones that, uh, the one you're talking about? Probably not. The Royal Navy didn't have a whole lot of carryover in naval vessels other than dreadnought battleships and maybe a couple heavy cruisers from World War I to II, to be honest with you. Because most of them were retired or phased out in order to comply with the Washington Naval Treaty. Right. Like, you know, if you if you only have a certain number of X, Y, Z, you didn't tend to keep old, outdated stuff. Right. Um, everything got replaced or modernized or refit pretty quick, especially when you had such a large, <coughs> um, such a large area to patrol. You need modern-ish vessels and maintaining a navy, uh, a, a navy the size of the Royal Navy in World War One was astronomically expensive. Um, in post-war, the British had enough to worry about without trying to maintain all that. Well, I think my 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 homeboys are done here, Christopher. You got outstanding. A couple of these style elves. Oh, Nike, he's still sticky. Um, but so three elves. One with the candy cane, one with the hank, one with the mallet, and one with the crossbow. We have Chris Kringle. We have. Dingle McCringle. And then we got six of these angry little Christmas goblins. So that was a good oof. Almost three hours though. That's not good. Two and a half hours. Yikes. Okay. Well, that took me a little longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. We got them base too though, so that's kind of good. But I think I'm probably still a little bit faster. Like if this was 10 figures or 11 figures that I was block painting and washing that were in a uniform scheme, I feel like I could have done that a little quicker, like 10 krauts or something yeah. from World War, World War II or some such. Right. <laughs> but yeah, in any case, I'm still happy with it. Oh man, that's what I should do. I got... Well, had you finished it in two hours and sit here and, and talk with us, it would have been the same effect. Well, that's fair. That's fair. I need, Chris, I think maybe I'll bring a bunch of Martians to March to Victory. And we'll we'll have just like a Martian brawl. There you uh, go. I, I forgot I painted up all these colonial Martians too. Yeah. Um, these guys. And that could be a pretty cool little fight to have these guys versus traditional Martians. Yeah, there you uh, go. Do you like a, a, a Gordon at cartoon thing where there's a British mm -hmm. car colonel with a bunch of these guys and they're getting attacked by um, traditional sort of Martians? That would be a pretty uh, Victorian sci-fi appropriate game. I'm going to need to build some sort of a Martian ruin for Gordon to be standing in. Call it Carsoom or something instead of Barsoom. But yeah. that could be a... Oh, I mean, let's be fair. They could be in the Barsoom. That's true. You know, drink, drinking their uh, their flush lights. Actually, that might be kind of cool. Do that and then have that airship that I had in the last Martian game. Yeah. Floating on as, uh, as Wolseley's relief column. That could be yep. kind of cool. That would allow me to really only need to bring up these nine Martians to the same basing scheme or 12 Martians, 13 Martians to the same basing scheme. And then uh, I could use basically the same miniatures from last time, which means I only have to also create cards for like these 13 guys. That could be right. a pretty, uh, that could be a pretty solid day game, I think. Cause then I can use essentially the same terrain, but maybe add, like I said, some sort of uh, ruin in the center instead of that airship. That, there you go. That could be pretty cool. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that'll be a a uh, ah shucks uh, a, a day game. That'd be kind of cool. Like I said, we'll see if Jay needs to fill tables. If he doesn't need to fill tables, then 
by all means, I'm more than happy to fart around, play, help out, do whatever. Um, actually, that's a good point. I can always help out at the auction because they always need help. And Oh, God, that'd be terrible, though. I'd lose so much money. Yeah, you yeah. would. But, yeah. So. Outstanding. But you'd have so many new toys. Dog, I have so many new toys from last year. I know. Are you telling me you have enough? No. Well, okay. No. I did wind up with way more armor than I thought. So I tried to go up there and buy a squad of Shermans from, or a platoon of Shermans from the guy. And he's like, uh, yeah, me, uh, meet me out by my car. I'll have them for you. And he just handed me all of it that didn't sell, which is basically all of it that I didn't buy. So I think I wound up with like 30, like one to 35 scale tanks. Because at some point in time, Chris and I are apparently going to put on the most absurdly giant game of what a tanker that's ever happened. Right. Why not? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that, Chris. Instead of just having two tables side by side, do it with that airship game and put two tables side by side and then one at 90 so that it makes like a five by seven and a half, eight foot board. Right. Um, or I'm sorry. Yeah. So that's five by seven and a half and just a huge game of what a tanker. Colossal. Because um, things are all painted too. They're like, really heavy metal models that's also the epitome of yeah you get to play and then you can just keep your tank and take it with you yeah um that's there you go make a goodwill donation to something and take your tank goodbye yep if it's not optional that's fine but you can't leave it here or if you don't want it that's fine but you have to give it to another player or somebody um Jesus i'm really sad Christ. The, uh, the local train store that would have been fantastic to source terrain for that for. Because at that point in time, you're basically just using o, o scale stuff. Um, it, it, the, the local place that used to be down here on Page in St. Louis has closed. And that makes me really sad because that place was stellar. Absolutely incredible for all kinds of stuff. Whether it was you needed terrain stuff in person or what's really awesome is they would have old guys that would come in and trade in their like HO scale terrain and stuff. And so you'd get full buildings and stuff like that for next to nothing. But that's okay. Okay. I'm officially done assembling. It's all the bits. All the bits and bobs are glued on in the correct locations. Hell yeah. But Jones, so, I got to get out of here. I got to get, I got to get eaten, and then I need to go to sleep early tonight because I forgot I got to wake up really ridiculously early. Yeah. So all I right. will see you guys soon. All right, take Thanks care, buddy. Right, name, right, boss. Be good, guys. Later's. So, I think we're. I'm going to go ahead and cut it short tonight. Also, well, short for a Saturday. Yeah, I know. It's really <laughs> boss. No, it's all good. I say I just, I literally just finished the assembly. Outstanding. He said, I'm hoping, well, my subs are supposed to be here on Monday. Okay. I've got an Akula class attack sub. I've got a Typhoon class ballistic missile sub. I've got, and I got two Los Angeles class attack subs. So. This comes with a wooden go. base. There you go. Very nice. Well, it's got a. It's got a bottom that you screw onto the base and you glue this onto that. Oh, yeah. But I think what I want to do, literally, this is going to go into the mothball fleet with all of my other models. But I, I think I'm going to try to put uh, an ocean, you know, practice the sculpt, you know, um, using the uh, toilet paper trick to do yeah. water. And right. Put that on here. So I'm not going to mount this until I. I do that, and then I'll practice my my painting on this. Yeah, it looks spiffy. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, had a little fiddly parts, but that's going to be nothing compared to that. Yeah, photo edge. So, yeah, I'm glad I got it done. 
So I do uh, need a magnifying glass. So do McMurray was talking about uh, how fast that British cruiser was. So this is a cruiser built by the Italians in 1939. 40 knots. I'm sorry. Italian cruiser built in 1939. Uh huh. It would do 41 knots top speed. Yeah, that's that's moving. Uh, that's 47 miles per hour. That that's that's damn near highway speed. <laughs> no, I mean that's that's fast. Yeah. The water ski behind that. The, the the Italians, um, yeah, the, the Italians had fast fucking ships, dude. I mean, even their battleships were fast uh, in comparison. Well, speed's so like, important, man. What's that? Speed is important. Oh yeah. Um, let's see here. So their early ships. Oh, now I can see the comments. Thanks, Tim. Sorry, I was with that with my thing down. I, I couldn't see any of the comments all night. I'm not sure. Yeah, that. um, that's why I wasn't responding if somebody had ever popped, said something to me. So thanks, Tim. That's nice. So the Andrea Doria class uh, could do well, that, 21 knots. That's about this. That's about World War Two or World War One era. Uh, about as good as you could do a World War One. But mm -hmm. then they got to the Francesco Car Caracciolo, which is a World War II ship. 1914 to 1915 is when the four ships were, were laid down. Um, they could do 28 knots. Okay. The Latoria, which is the which is the basic World War the was the World War II. Uh, Italian ship. She could, she could, she was as fast as uh, Missouri at thirty knots. <coughs> Excuse me. And they were built in mid to late thirties. So, well, if you want to run away from somebody, you need speed, or you're trying to catch somebody. Yeah, yep, you don't want to exactly. be the slow one. Unless you had a bigger gun. Right. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, catch me. <laughs> <laughs> I got something for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, well, gents, for those of y'all that are still out there, thanks for staying. I uh, truly appreciate it. I know Tim's still out there. Me and Mike, you're probably still out there. Thanks for dropping in, guys. I'm yep. sure. Uh, I'm sure Charles is the third sitting out there. Thanks, one and all. Uh, everyone else that dropped in, I do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I hope everybody has a great night, and we will see you this coming Wednesday for episode 107. And uh, we uh, haven't. Uh, oh yeah, I do know who we're talking about with hundred with episode one hundred seven. We're gonna have the guys from uh, the war room. Uh, the war room. So we'll have uh, Rough Swordsman. Uh, Tony plays board games, and uh, ID Jester. Be good. So be good. Looking forward to it. Yep. All right, guys. Nice. Until next time, we shall see you on the flip side. <laughs>